Okay, guys, we are live. So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly fate weaver because uh, tonight, because tonight uh, we were going to be continuing on with our Call of Cthulhu campaign, but uh, talking beforehand, we realized it had been at the time of recording two months since our last session. We were missing people tonight, and it will be a because of the holidays another month before we get back. So rather than try to remember what happened two months ago and then start playing and then have to do the same process uh, a month from now, we have elected to uh, return to a new channel favorite and uh, give uh, Jeff and Jamie a chance to play some more Blackbirds and give Gary a chance to actually try out Blackbirds himself. So what we'll be playing tonight is Ryan Vernier's outstanding Blackbirds Gothic Fantasy RPG. Uh, this is published by Andrews McMeal, and this is wow, the regular edition. So if you're looking for this gorgeous cover uh, at your friendly local gaming shop or bookshop or online retailer, uh, that's what you'll be looking for. But enough of me talking about how to get a hold of the Blackbirds. Let me introduce you to the stars of tonight's session. Uh, why don't you guys tell us who you are and who you're playing tonight? Uh, first up, we've got Jeffrey. Hey, Musers. I'm Jeff, and I'm going to be playing Adeliza. Uh, she is a bow and blade specialist. Who nice. Who likes drinking and killing. Equally. She does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is Gary. Hi there. Uh, I am playing Herrick tonight, and uh, Herrick is uh, essentially a thief and uh, grew up on the mean streets of the uh, the world and uh, has a heart of gold, but uh, has been forced into doing some pretty shifty things in their lifetime. Nice. <laughs> and they use a uh, staff and a bullwhip. Okay. Oh yeah, right, your bullwhip. I love it. Uh, and last but certainly not least is Jamie. Hey everyone, I'm Jamie. I'm going to be playing Farakis Kazal. He is a Nephilim and he is specialized in shadow and subterfuge. He uh, is equipped with a a long sword, and he has also recently acquired the uh, Blade of Salvestro Barbato. Oh, the Blade of Salvestro Barbato. Uh, that was actually destroyed in the last session. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember how that happened. There was some critical failure, I think, that happened, and uh, Sean was playing Farrakis at the time and genuinely did not want to have that that corrupted weapon. <laughs> so he's yeah. like, oh no, it's lost. <laughs> Good. Okay, then thank you, Sean, for that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's right. You got that from that uh, spider yeah. critter, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So you can feel free to get for rid me. of that uh, the cursed blade of Salvestro Barbato. Gladly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so guys, uh, as a, a reminder, the Blackbirds uh, uh, game, it take, or, or at least our uh, War Road campaign, uh, takes place in the uh, kingdom of, uh, let's see here, where are you? Here we go. Right up here, Elkland. Elkland has, in the last 12 years, been in a pretty much constant state of civil war, with one side turning on the other side. There's not a single stretch of Elkland that has not been touched by the Civil War, or uh, also known as the Betrayer's War, which is but one of the sub-conflicts taking part in the uh, War of Empty Thrones that has been going on low these 12 years now. And two years ago uh, was the cataclysmic event known as the Extinguishing, when the oligarchs scaled Yggdrasil to uh, the heavens and killed the gods. Uh, so you were dealing with the aftermath of that, but really on a more uh, personal level, what you guys are uh, focused on at present is survival. And our story t uh, opens up in perhaps the most iconic of heroic places, in the middle of nowhere with our heroes trying to start a fire in a very cold <laughs> landscape. So since we last saw our heroes, this uh, the last story was in the... Mm, 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 mm. Oh, the Brindamir Vale. Uh, you have continued uh, your way along to uh, Culwadeen. Farrakis has still been assuring all of you that once you get to Culwadeen, he knows somebody's going to look up and then you'll be able to get some, you know, 
we'll be able to get some uh, something going here. Herrick, um, I think that like these others, uh, so I guess one of the things to, to reiterate about the game, uh, the name of the of the player characters and the, and the name of the game itself, Blackbirds, comes from a as part of that cataclysmic overthrowing of the gods. The oligarchs also killed the three Norns, uh, the gods uh, or goddesses of fate, and when they died, uh, it almost like birds fleeing, you know, or scattering from the top of a, a tree, little motes of fate went flying out uh, from there and lodged themselves uncontrolled into different individuals. Uh, so they're, um, the, they're, it, the player characters that you're playing in Blackbirds, the Blackbirds themselves, are all unintended agents of fate. It's why you have um, the capability of doing certain things that other mortal uh, beings simply cannot do. And those motes of fate are often drawn together into flocks. And that's where our group has come. Um, Adelaide and Farrakis, I think at this point, um, will assume that you guys had dreamed about Farrak at one point. And where do you think... Um, and any of you guys can uh, feel free to, to uh, comment on this. Where do you think you all ran into one another? Do you think it was at like a refugee, like a, a place where, you know, t uh, folks fleeing the various conflicts were meeting? Do you think it was at a roadside tavern? Uh, was it, did you foolishly take another mercenary contract, Adelaide and Farrakis? Or uh, did you, um, was this just someone you happened upon and you know, in the year, the days leading up to it, you happened to see this person in your uh, in your dreams. And Herrick, likewise, you saw these two perhaps in your dreams. What do you guys think? I give you a couple of options there. Feel free to come up with your own as well. Uh, well, what if it was a combination of a couple of the ones they said there? What if it was like a makeshift tavern at a refugee camp? Love mm -hmm. it. Yep. Yep. What if, I was, what if I was caught stealing something? And they <laughs> admired my skill, but knew I needed some help. Oh, nice. Well, you would see you, because uh, one of the things that is clear from the game, you all have agency in the sense that you, you are aware of the connection between you, you uh, one another. <sighs> so it's more than just um, like that they would have seen you stealing. Perhaps uh, mm -hmm. they became, um, I don't know, if you were trying to steal from them. Th the difficulty with that is why didn't they kill you? Is because they recognized oh, yeah. your face? Yeah, I think maybe Farrakis would have remembered that face from his visions and dreams as well, and that mm. would have resonated yeah. right away. So perhaps have... while you're at the bar, uh, Herrick came by and you know, of, of, he attempted to filch something from you. You caught his hand. You both turned to look at one another, and you're both like, "You, you." <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. uh, so that Herrick is a little, uh, you know, is early. Uh, to this. Oh, and for those listening at home as well, we made the decision to play this about 15 minutes ago. So uh, the <laughs> the structure and uh, plotting on this uh, one uh, sh this session will be fairly loose. <laughs> so um, <laughs> you guys have once again decided to overland, and I think what you've heard is that uh, the road. What? Um, mm, let's do this. Let's get some dice rolling. Um, let me get my Fate Weaver screen. I fucking love. Why don't you guys give us a folklore check? And all of you can. Now here's what we can do, actually. Why don't we have uh, who is feeling like they'd like to take the lead on this and who would like to assist? I am not trained on it. That's okay. You can still uh, attempt here. A folklore is one of those ones that isn't, um, you don't uh, flip to fail uh, if you're not trained. Not not in uh, Blackbirds, at least. Pardon me? Who is uh, anyone trained in, in uh, folklore? Folklore. No, my uh, intelligence is 45. Okay. 45, what's uh, Adelaide and Farrakis' uh, intelligence? Uh, 43. Four, 47. Okay. Okay. So I'm not. The so Farrakis, why don't you take the lead on this, and then um, Herrick and Adelaide just roll one uh, d10, and then what you can do is uh, by aiding, you can swap in whatever Herrick or Adelaide rolled for your uh, dice. So Farrakis, give us a folklore check. Oh, that's a. Z <laughs> that could be good or could be bad. Okay, so that could make yours 
you've already got a success there. It's a oh, 55 is a, a crit, but that'd be a fail though. So that's probably not what yeah. you want. So no. the 10 would make it an 05. So it would be a success. Yeah, there we go. We can sub, sub in his 10. So you guys are talking a bit. You've asked around at this, uh, or you had been asking around about, um, you know, one of the things you've learned having run into bandits recently and some other issues uh, recently is, oh, and assume also all of your weapons are back at their regular starting state. They've been repaired or whatever. So I think some oh, weapons, right. yeah, yeah, there is some yeah. deterioration. If you need to double check what those uh, stats should be, it's on uh, page uh, 223 of the core rulebook. This is one of these games uh, for Christmas. Uh, we have all of our players in the roster got a copy of Blackbird, so everyone can uh, reference their giant physical copies. Um, then what um, what you've heard is that the the like the reason that you went over land is because the uh, you heard that there uh, the one of the villages that the next stretch of road would be passing through had been stricken with some kind of early winter plague. Uh, so there is some kind of thing that's that's going around there. You elected to try and overland it to go around there and hope that the plague hasn't spread up the other direction of the road. Um, is anyone trained? in uh, survival. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I know it's so a rare far. skill for me to ask about in any of our games, but... Uh, Farrakis is. Farrakis is? So then, Farrakis, why don't you give us a um, survival check, please? And you get plus 20 to this. Oh, okay. Nice. So you manage to scrounge together enough food uh, to... Um, to keep everyone fed. It's, it's mostly like cold <laughs> things that you've uh, scrambled together, perhaps. Uh, does anyone have any ranged weapons? Well, that's another interesting question. I don't, I don't think, think so. I know. I don't <laughs> no, think so. <laughs> I mean, All right. Throwing dagger. That's about no. it. Who I built these characters? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so what that means is just that I think it is scrounging just because it would be difficult to hunt with what you've you know with a throwing dagger or with a, a long sword <laughs> chasing after a rabbit come here you uh, <laughs> the bullwhip may afford you a little extra distance but um, I don't know that that still would be a terribly effective hunting tool uh, however you, you've got something together and uh, for this like third night of traveling through uh, you do have at least some, um, you'll have a, a campfire for tonight. Uh, and I think you rolled well enough. What is your survival is based on, what is it? Uh, perception. What's your perception bonus, Farrakis? One. Is that right? This says one. Your PB is only a one? Oh, PB is a six. A six, okay, yeah. Any of those B is just a bonus, so it's like, uh, combat bonus, agility bonus. Okay. Okay. So the reason I'm asking about that is because the difference between what you rolled and what you needed is a f in the tens digit is a four plus six means ten is your overall degree of success. If it was a contested roll, that tells us that's a pretty freaking good roll, and you're also pretty good at this. So you've actually got shelter and whatnot uh, in here as well. As you were betting down, though, why don't we have uh, is uh, sorry, Herrick or Adelaide are either of you trained in? Um, uh, in survival as well? No. Uh, no. No, okay. It's so, 53 perception. Why don't you, and I don't think... Survival's a common skill. Which of you would like to check around for uh, for any danger in this area? I mean, I could see that's something that Adelaide would probably do. Sure. Go ahead and give us a uh, perception check. Uh, give This one will give you, a, once again, plus 20. Uh, not percentage, I'm sorry, uh, survival. Sorry. Oh, uh, survival. So that's... Nope. Go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, as you're looking around here, what you find uh, are some enormous prints. And they are very easy to judge because, you know, once you've seen bear prints... It's hard to mistake them for, say, wolves or elk or anything else that may be lurking in these woods. This is about 
maybe f- between 50 and 75 feet away from camp as you were sort of, you know, bushwhacking through as Fericus was struggling with getting the fire started. I mean, I would immediately mark their location and head back to tell everyone. Okay, so what do you say? Bad news. There is a bear in this area. And almost... We may have a bit of a restless night. As soon as you say that, you hear... (laughs) A roar. So... Uh, now, normally we would set the initiative ladder. Uh, rules is written. The, the initiative ladder in the game is we set that as a first thing. Because we play in roll 20, as soon as we change from one screen to another, we lose those initiative scores. So it's just as easy to click on the tokens and then click on initiative, please. And because you've got warning, it means that you are not caught by surprise. But allow me to show you We're close. what is coming in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's on the combat tab, right? on the combat tab yeah and it's underneath like where the uh where the various um uh what do you call it armor uh stats are on the right hand side it's it's kind of an an unintuitive location this guys is what is coming towards you okay 16 uh herrick did you click on your token uh, first uh no i don't Remember, so. yeah. Uh, uh, if you want uh, things to display properly, you need to click on your token and then click on initiative. Always in roll oh. twenty. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. And I get uh, two initiatives uh, due to my um, trait. Oh, so you roll. Oh, good. You know cool. what? Actually, here. Then that's a roundabout way. Let me just get back to the right layer here. Uh, you have a roundabout way of actually not clicking on. So you'll take the and you take the better of the two. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so you have to take um, okay, so let me. There we go. Oh, I, I got you already. Okay, okay. I yep. wasn't sure if you saw those. Okay. Descending. Okay, so then, and let me add where this thing is in. Again, something I like about Blackbirds with a fixed initiative for the enemies. It's pretty awesome. Okay, where are you, buddy? I saw you around here. Where'd you go? You think it wouldn't be that hard to find a bear, but you know, you might be mistaken. There's that, there's that. Good news. Good <laughs> news indeed. All right. And he has an initiative of 13. Okay. All right. So he is, um, and heroes always go before the adversaries. Um, then, first up is Herrick. Let's assume that this thing is about 20. How many? I'll take two rounds for it to get in. Uh, or two uh, actions to get in. 14. It is 28 strides away. So your movement that's listed there, every action you spend on that doing a hustle, uh, that will give you two actions. So Herrick, you're up first. You have three action points. And if you want to see what your combat actions available are, they're right in there. And it tells you what the costs are. So... What would you like to do? Three actions. And remember, if you wish to save anything for defenses, uh, then you do it uh, that way. Okay, I will. Sorry, I'm having a tough time reading the graphic. Um... Oh, so first off, let's refresh our memory of how the slotting of techniques and talents work. Remember, you can have one talent and one technique active. And you can spend a a fortune point to swap out a technique or a talent. So Herrick, looking at yours, so if we look under your main tab. I should really be wearing my glasses, sorry. No worries. So go to main. Okay. Yeah, that- uh, That'll tell you where- Small. 
Okay, then what we do is things that are active, we keep open. So your trait, molded by darkness, will always be active, so that should always be open. Your technique, your talent, you only have one talent, so you might as well leave that open. Okay. Okay. I, uh... And I already used that with the reflexes, so yep. I... Yeah, okay. and talents are generally give just persisting benefits. They don't give you access to certain actions. That's where your techniques come in. Okay. So your two techniques are either uh, Prowler or... Let me here. I'm just going to clean up your display here for you. Give me a sec. I apologize to everybody watching in frustration at home. <laughs> oh, no, no. I don't think anyone who would be joining us for any of our games is, is thinking that we're, uh, you know... We're running anything other than the actual at the table experience. Oh, no, 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 no. Phew. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to work. That's that for you. All right. So now um, I just wanted to what, what position your talent so you could decide which of the two techniques you've got active right now. Okay. I will definitely choose a uh, bullwhip. Okay. So then that one's open. So you've got those things active. Uh, it is free to draw a weapon. As long as it's yep. in like a scabbard or something like that. So if you want to, you know, Indiana I Jones. Will, yeah, I think I'm going to pull my bullwhip out. Okay. Um, and I can't quite see how many actions that takes. That, that's assuming... nothing. It's free to okay. draw a weapon. Free to draw a weapon. And then um, I will uh, take a defensive posture as well. If it's easier to reference in the book, uh, yeah, the what page is combat on? section is on. Uh, start on page 165. Okay, thank you. And that gives you a different option. So um, you can make more than one attack. Every subsequent attack is minus 10% to your chance to hit. Uh, and likewise, if they have a defense available, it will grant them plus 10. So uh, a hustle will allow you to move equal to your movement in uh, strides. If you wish to close. And then what are the traits that the bullwhip has? The uh, traits, the effect? Uh, no, um, the traits. That the, you know, hold on. I can look at it myself. Don't know. You worry about making your decision for what you want to do. Your turn. I'll look that up. So I can find that easily. How about I not be lazy and make use of this thing? Okay, so bullwhip have entangling and reach, which means entangling. Immediately after striking a foe, weapons of this quality force uh, targets to resist either a grapple or a takedown. Uh, the Blackbird's character chooses which. Additionally, the foe must be adjacent to, uh, must adjust the chance to resist by the number in parentheses, which uh, there isn't for a bullwhip, I don't think. Nope. And then it also has reach, which means you can make a... Uh, opportunity attack, which is a free attack whenever someone charges or runs at you. And you can attack one stride away. So, Herrick, what are you doing? That sounds like a good plan to me. Um, well, it's 28 strides away right now, so yeah. what are you thinking? Well, let's hustle. Okay. So one of your actions, how, what's your, your movement? Uh, eight. Okay, so you're 20 strides away from this thing. Uh, you have two uh, more actions. You could hustle again if you choose to. Sure, let's hustle again. Okay. And hold on. Careful, think... you don't use up all your actions. Yeah, and then uh, let's choose a defensive. To and save one AP. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you you can also want to uh, remember you can spend uh, fortune points to, to gain AP just as, on a one for one basis, uh, but um, you need to spend them on your turn. You need to spend the fortune points. So if you want to bank, you want to take extra actions, uh, you could do that, uh, and then bank uh, or spend fortune points to bank some extras and i also want to see i think you can run if you want to cover more distance 16 might be enough for you but um in the event yeah run is three ap you run a distance equal to three times your movement and you get plus three to your damage threshold until the beginning of your next turn i uh i'm not uh, gonna be able to attack this round so Let's okay. j j just stop there. Okay, so you got uh, one AP in reserve. Adeliza, what yep. are you doing? Uh, free action to draw my weapon. Yep. And what's my movement speed? Is it on combat? Uh, it's under combat, yeah. I think it's on the top. I think it's on the right column. Right. Damage. 
Good shield. I'll grab a character who that isn't you guys, so I'm not. Oh, so take. Uh, it's one. It's not an action to draw my sword, but it is an action to get my shield out. Uh, it is an action to get your shield ready. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I get my shield ready. Um, okay. With one action, I move with one action. I'll just check how. It's underneath encumbrance on the left side. Oh, okay. Six. Six. Okay, so you move six uh, per stride. Or hustle. Um. Yeah, and I'll save my last action. Okay. For... So you're starting to advance. Herrick mm -hmm. is a little closer uh, to the others. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> then, oh, we'll get rid of Gita here. Farakus, what are you doing? Um, so where was that movement at again? You uh, said under... Under combat, uh, just beneath uh, um, the on the left side, under encumbrance. Okay. So it's, I'm like uh, 10. A, I think it's AB plus 3. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to try to keep pace with Herrick and okay. head in that direction towards the bear. I'll have my long sword readied okay. and move towards him. Okay. Uh, so then it is the bear's turn. Uh, so he uh, begins charging towards you and I'll need two actions to get into combat. Farakas, did you stop even with Herrick, or did you move closer? Even. Even with yeah. Herrick? <laughs> All right, so why don't you guys each roll one Chaos Dice to do that on the top middle uh, of the uh, character sheet. Yeah, there we go. Got a four, and you can choose how many Chaos Dice you're rolling. Go ahead and roll. So four, whoever rolls lowest is not attacked. Did you say on the uh, combat? Uh, no, uh, in the middle of it, all of the car chaos dice carries over from one to the other. So near the top. Of which which tab, sorry? It's, it's on all, every tab. Oh, every it tab. remains yeah. the same and near the top on the right. Okay, well, I'm not seeing this. Look, look right above the word trappings under the tab, or right above the tab for trappings. You should see oh. chaos dice. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Every kiss. Wow, Herrick is <laughs> <laughs> getting a chance to break in the uh, Blackbird's character with a good mauling. <laughs> so Let's see he comes in. Bah, 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 bah. Now I. Oh boy. Yeah, actually, I would have charged. So you get an attack on him first, Herrick. Okay. Uh, I will use my bullwhip. Yep. Go ahead and just click on it. It's a no modifier. Okay. Okay. That is a hit. Uh, and then, unfortunately, it is seven points of damage. So you whip this thing, and it's, you know, enormous, tough hide. If it's... If it felt it whatsoever, it gives no indication of that. Okay. And then slams into... Oh, though, however, however, you get a chance to entangle. Uh, so, let me quickly... You know, I've got these fancy... Uh, uh, cloth bookmarks. How about I make use of them? There we go. I'm trying to remember how... What is resisted by... Let's take a look. Okay, here we go. Entangled. So you can choose. Do you wish to make a grapple or a takedown? Let's try a takedown. That'll be uh, okay. good if it's charging. So then, uh, takedown is... is, is, is uh, you make a coordination test. Okay. Uh, but at, with plus 20. Uh, weapons with an entangling quality grant plus 20. So go ahead and make a coordination at plus 20. Success, nice. Uh, and then uh, I use athletics. Oh, resist with coordination. All right, so then what is this thing's coordination? Uh, bum, 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 bum. Plus 20, I have a 60, 60. Uh, percent chance here. So let's see. Critical success. Oh. So let me see if there is anything that 
triggers with a critical success and a resist. Uh, so anytime you roll doubles, uh, Gary, that is a critical uh, effect. If you roll a natural 100 or a natural 1, that is a sublime effect. So you have a critical success, critical failure, regular success, regular failure, sublime success, sublime failure. Uh, resist, resist, let's see. Is, is, is. <laughs> uh, only for the blackbirds they move one level up on the peril threshold if you succeed in it in resisting it you feel so good about yourself you move one up on the peril threshold unfortunately this was the bear he is not anywhere on that so he just charges in and he brings that massive paw up he's gonna try and get you herrick uh so his chance to hit is a 65 so here we go. That is a fail. Oh, so good. He swings over you and misses. Uh, he is engaged with you now, and Farrakis, if you're standing uh, pair or in, in line with him, he's likewise engaged with you. Adelaza, I believe they are only four strides away from you at this point. Herrick, you're Perfect. back up. Round two. Uh, oh, no, hold on. There, we're done first round. Now everyone click on your token. Remember to click on your token, then click on initiative. And Herrick rolled twice. And we'll take the better of the two. I'm not too sure if that's just on the first initial one. Oh, or is it only in your concept. first one? Click on the speed trouble. Let's see. Okay. Oh, ah. no, Adelaza. Dang it. Slow. Now, you remember, you can spend a fortune point to move up on the ladder. No, it's okay. okay. She's just she's just eyeing her target. So, uh, it might just her. be, it might just be, uh, or it might be forever. Yeah. Well, that, that seems quite short for, yeah. The description of, of this ability. So let's just quickly check and see. Uh, and your um, shadow and subterfuge path, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then we look at the back here. <clears throat> All right. Um, lightning reflexes. Oh, um, you cannot take lightning reflexes. Remember, because that is a second tier ability. That's the okay. one we talked about. I think uh, you don't meet the prerequisite because you're not a second tier. Let's. Okay. Um, Let's just uh, scrap, scrap that for now, and I'll we'll figure that out after. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's... Um, you, you, you've got to be very careful when you're selecting your things okay. because of the prerequisites. Um, uh, so... What, a, what do, initiative? Oh, no! Right. <laughs> okay. So, at the start of initiative, uh, what uh, we're seeing is it'll be Farrakis, then the bear, then Adelaza, then Herrick. You can't spend... Remember, fortune points, they are there to be spent. Uh, just like in Conan, you should be spending these things. This is what helps make the game fun. If I don't have misfortune points, I don't get to do cool things with my monsters. So, Farrakis, uh, you're up first. I, I guess, first off, is anyone spending uh, fortune points to go before the bear, or is it going to get to act before Adelaza or Herrick? I think this would be a good opportunity to use uh, the fortune points. Is that the same as fate points? So you would note fate point is something different. Uh, uh, fate okay. point is what you use to not die or to avoid catastrophic circumstances. It's your okay. way of intervening. Each of you has one fate point. And then if you spend that at the end of the session, uh, we flip the a coin. If it comes up heads, you get fate back. If it comes up tails, you don't have it that next session. Okay. And then well, you do I that will... twice the next session after that. And if you still don't get it, three times a session after that. And if you still don't get it, you keep flipping three. Well, by that point, you must have so much bad luck accumulated. So for Herrick, for you, you'd need to spend two fortune points to be able to jump up to act before the bear, if you wish. I think I'm in dire situation, so I will. Where do we track it? Uh, I take care of that for you. You just tell okay. me you're spending so it. I will use two, please. Okay, so I got two misfortune points. Thank you for those. All right, then, uh, Farrakis, you're up first. What are you doing? Farrakis is going to take a targeted attack against the bear with his long sword. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll be two actions to do that, and which uh, which result are you, are you shooting for for the targeted? Um, let's see, it's 
what are my choices there? Uh, so they are on page one, I think 167. Yeah, 167. Um, you can target the arm to disarm them, which isn't possible really with the bear. Uh, body makes them wounded. They, they gain uh, conditions. Uh, body is wounded, head is disoriented, and leg is prone. Prone, I think, makes sense, you know, is, is intuitive. What disoriented does is, let's see here, conditions. Uh, disoriented, um, they must add plus one AP to the cost of reactions, and wounded must add plus one AP to the cost of movement. Mm. Um, I'm gonna go for a leg. For a leg, nice, okay. <clears throat> Try and knock this thing to the ground. So yep. go ahead and make an attack. Ah, you want to spend a fortune point to re-roll? Yes. Okay. This is the one Jeffy asked about uh, rolling ones on uh, Wednesday session. This is the game you're thinking of, where if you roll uh, criticals, uh, you cannot. Uh, oh yeah. Re-roll re -roll them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you uh, slash at this thing's leg. Uh, you have one more action. Remember, each of your techniques, whatever one you have slotted, will often give you access to uh, actions, unique actions as well. Uh, one more action left, Fericus, or you can spend uh, a fortune points to get new uh, points if you'd like. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll actually just save mine to parry. Okay. All right, so Herrick, I uh, know you did spend the two points, Herrick, but I did not move you up, so there we go. So Herrick, you've pull, called on fate. Uh, what would you like to do? You got three action points. Well, uh, I am going to uh, try to take down the other leg. Okay. If I can, and entangle them, so I'm gonna use my bull whip once again. Go right ahead. Shwack. Nice, critical success. It means he cannot defend against that. So 13 is enough to actually whack, hurt this thing. Now, one other thing you can do with fortune points, remember, is spend one to add six to the result of damage. Six is an important number because that's the threshold between how many wounds something suffers. Well, I think it's important because this bullet did nothing last time, so let's use another yeah. fortune point. Okay, and then that means it is down by three. Roar, it roars in pain. Uh, and I'll get rid of that fortune point. Uh, then you get to give us a coordination check, please. Okay. At plus 20. Because of your bull whip. Do so you whip around its, uh, one of its four paws? <clears throat> pull it. Let's see. No! Oh. I spent a fortune Shit. point reroll. Yes, please. <laughs> nice. See how easy it is to get him to spend? Love it. And then I'm hmm. just going to be nothing. Okay, we'll try one more time. Yeah, go ahead. Plus 20 still. Come on, plus 20 still. Here you go. There you go, success. All right, so it gets to resist. It has uh, a 66 zero percent chance of succeeding. Let's see, 98, Boom. falls down prone. Herrick, you got one more action. Uh, well, I think I'm just gonna save it for a dodge, even though it's prone. Um, can I also, I can't remember if my bullwhip is one or two-handed. Uh, I thought about maybe pulling my shield. I think shift. one. Like, I don't think I've ever seen anyone use two hands. Yeah, yeah. but uh, maybe I can with, uh, draw my shiv. Yes, well. uh, good call, because it adds plus one to damage your bullwhip. It's got the offhand quality, so it adds plus one to damage. Okay. So, uh, all right, so you got that out, and you got your lion tamer bullwhip out. Then it is... Bear a clock unless Adelaide is spending any uh, fortune. Uh, no, not at this Kay. time. So the bear spins, has to spend two actions <laughs> pulling itself up, and then it is going to <laughs> sweep with its paw uh, against uh, Herrick, actually. You're the one who's really been causing it problems here. So this is a 65% chance. 30 is a hit. You want to defend? Okay. Yes, please. Okay, so go ahead and roll your parry. It will be your, now hold on, actually, I didn't set up your character sheet. Let me make sure this is set up. Uh, we are, uh, for those listening at home, there isn't a, there is a Zweihander and there's a Flames of Freedom character sheet in roll 20. There isn't one for Blackbirds yet, which means that we're having to kind of kludge some stuff. It is definitely uh, usable with it, but it means that you need to be, uh, like for instance, there is only one melee uh, skill in this, whereas, 
both the other games have martial melee and simple melee. I just wanted to make sure that your parry is set to the right skill so you're getting the benefit of actually having uh, training in it, Herrick. So, Herrick, go ahead and give us a parry check. Okay. Come on. Oh, critical <laughs> fail. All right, you're getting the taste of all the actions. Now, one of the things that's important mm. about criticals is that it means uh, you cannot... Um, uh, but you can't re-roll it with uh, fortune points. You still can use fate points to avoid like things like dying, but um, and a critical fail on parry, I believe, means you're losing that weapon. Uh, oh goodness! So critical oh. fail. Was it the whip, Gary? It was the whip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my shiv will come in handy for the remainder of the adventure. <laughs> okay, it's actually not... Where is it here? I'm thinking the bear picked up an extra attack if he gets a hold of that whip. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Okay. It actually doesn't say in um, in Blackbirds. Uh, on a successful attack, you uh, you avoid all damage. If it critically succeeds, you avoid all damage and spend no AP. On a sublime success, there's nothing expressly about critical failures in it. Let me see here. Oh, unless, hold up. Um, here we go, it's under the defenses section. Page 176 is where it has it. Uh, so, Perry. No, actually not. Yeah, they don't contemplate the critical failure. Hmm. So I must just not be a big deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just looking at Cause, that Because, yeah, too, like when it, the way they model critical hits is a critical hit in... Um, when when uh, you are critically hit, it damages your armor. When you are when you suffer a critical uh, failure when you are attacking, it degrades your armor. But it doesn't actually say what happens, at least in either of those two sections, what happens when you critically fail with your defenses. So I'm going to steal the rules from Flames of Freedom and Disarm You. So if okay. this goes flying out of your, out of your hand... Uh, and then it gets to hit you. So, oof, 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 oof. it has acquired two levels of damage, which means its damage goes up. Because an angry bear is a dangerous bear. <laughs> Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. They have a saying in in uh, Banff Park, a fed bear is a dead bear, and I was trying to come up with something clever that plays off of that about a hit bear or a struck bear, but I am drawing a complete <laughs> blank. Uh, so, oh, ooh, this also has the punishing quality on it, which I did not look up. What does punishing do? Uh Oh, adds one extra. I don't have any extra AP, but I could cash in AP to do extra dice of damage on this. That's good to know. It hits you. You take 1d6 plus uh, 8. Here we go. Let's see. Hopefully. Oof. 12 points. So how does 12 compare to your damage threshold, Herrick? Uh, my damage threshold is two. 
oh, well, that can't be right. Unless you are made out of porcelain. Uh, let's see here. I think there's been an error. Do you have any armor on? That's probably uh, negative. I don't think it came with trappings. Oh, my God. And you've got... Where's your main character sheet here? Let's see your stats. Okay, so your brawn is a three. Oh, and you got a minus one to your brawn. <laughs> okay, so yeah. You are a very fragile individual. You are made of paper. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> here we go. So here's what happens is uh, it has been, you know, we'll keep it under combat because um, okay. I need to look at your damage threshold. So uh, 12, we look at the B, your brawn bonus is a two. Uh, I beat one, two, but not three. So you go down two on your damage conditions. So move your damage condition track down by two. Is that the uh, moderately wounded? That's then? the drop down. Yep, moderately wounded. And because you are moderately wounded, would you kindly roll one chaos dice for us? Do not roll a six. Oh, yeah, don't roll a six. Oh, no, no, hold on. Um, yeah, ignore me. Do not roll a six. There's, there's, there's an ability the bear's got. Okay. So you, you ever seen the Revenant? Yeah. <laughs> no sixes. No sixes. Come on. Oh, oh. no! Chaos Rage! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so... Uh, you just now, jinxed me, Kev. This is where... You're really getting this, the full taste <laughs> of the game today. Uh, here's what you see. is We go to the, uh, the, the injury thing... And what I was looking at is the brutal assault ability of the uh, of the bear. What this means is that normally we would be rolling at this level on the moderate injury table, but because of that, um, what do you call it? The uh, brutal assault, we actually roll on one more serious. So we're rolling on the serious injury table, which give Whoa. us a one D. This is just a regular one D six. You can roll a chaos dice if you like or anything else. Lower is better here. Four. Uh, fractured ribs. A blow to the side sunders the victim's rib cage. Until recuperated, all rolls made for them to parry or dodge suffer minus 20. Oh, okay. So, the way that damage is tracked, like really, until you suffer injuries, you're, un you're uninjured, you're able to keep on fighting. It's just you're getting closer to the point where you're too exhausted and you take a real serious injury. Uh, this is a good example of how you can be injured but not down. So you hear cracking as this massive paw boom, batters Herrick to the side. Adelaza, you're up next. What are you doing? Well, now I'm concerned. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my first action point to move into position. Yeah. <laughs> and then my second action point will be to attack with my long sword. Go ahead. Uh, wait a second. I just gotta make sure my fury dice are right. Yeah, you I got, have yeah. things that make it go back and forth. Uh, yeah, you're facing okay. one adversary, I think, so you get the extra fury dice, right? Or is it the uh, extra bonus to hit from duelist? No, it's, yeah, it's the other way. Other I get run, plus yeah. 10 to my t combat when it's a single yeah. target. So I have to. So I should only have one fury dice? You should only have a one, one fury dice, yes. By normal, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so it's plus 10 to hit him, though. Yeah. So it is 13. Here we go. Come on, big money. There you go. Hit. Yeah. Whack. All right, and a 13, 15 is... Ooh, is enough to knock it down, too. Would you roll a three uh, chaos dice, please? Come on. Dumb bear. There roll you six. go. Yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, would you give us a 1d6 roll, please? Pay him back a little bit. A oh. One. Okay, so that is... There we go. Uh, it is... It's diamond. Grievous injuries. Impaled. The victim's been run through. While impaled on a foe's weapon, they cannot dodge, and all combat-based skill and parry tests made for them are flipped to fail. On their wow. turn, the victim may attempt to remove themselves from their foe, their weapon from their foe's body, which costs three AP. However, they immediately suffer from the Scarlet Torrent, a uh, serious bleeding effect then. 
If the victim cannot be impaled by their foe's weapon, they are instead hobbled. So yeah, you've got your blade like sunk in here uh, to this uh, thing. Oh, hell yeah. Which might make me change my last action. What are you thinking? Well, because normally I keep uh, an action to uh, I can't remember what's to called. To your defense, now. the yeah, my defensive thing. Uh, let's see, it's called Barovi's guard. Mm -hmm. But if the bear is this injured and impaled on my sword, maybe I, I can. Uh, yeah, no, I oh. probably can't do two actions anyway. You know, you could have done two. Um, you could also have spent a fortune point to add one to the or add six to the result that would be one more injury six is enough to kill it oh well i was gonna say like yeah okay no we'll we'll do the round of combat for the guys okay <laughs> Eric's struggling to breathe. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You I, I think that just she just drag it out. I'm not sure that the I'm not sure that the bear could probably still attack me, so I'm still gonna use my Barovi's guard. I also have a lot of uh, misfortune points right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. So that brings us to the end of the round, guys. Everyone, click on their token and click on initiative. We're just going to beat the Baron initiative, and it doesn't matter. Let me see here. I actually might be able to spend misfortune points to move up. Uh, you are restricted in what you can spend misfortune points on, so I'm just going to see what I can what I can spend it on. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. I can spend misfortune to let myself go f uh, up in the initiative order. Oh, cool. Uh, so I'm going to spend three, so I get the, my bear gets to go first. Oh. Here we go. Five. What's well, freaking three. out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then it still has to remove itself off my sword. <laughs> Well, the thing is, uh, I'm spending, I'm using um, one of its uh, misfortune spends to use the Maul ability. I don't even need to attack for this. Three AP, and you, uh, Adelaza, take 2d6 plus 4 damage, and you gain a moderate injury. Wow. Yep. Uh, so, let's see here. This is, I'm going to roll 2d6, exclamation mark. Oops. Uh, so, uh, uh, Gary, uh, what? Um, another thing that's awesome about this game is that every individual adversary uh, has specific abilities I can spend to trigger based on misfortune spends. So everything you fight is going to have a little bit of a different flavor to it. So what this thing does is just it lashes out, smashes uh, Adelaza. She only takes 11. How does that compare to your uh, damage threshold? Uh, that is just level one. Okay, so you go down by one, you're lightly wounded. Uh, and then, would you give us a 1d6 roll? Let's see what uh, light, what uh, moderate injury you suffer here. It's probably best to just click on a tail. Five, yeah, 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 that'll work. Uh, five, dropped. That last hit knocks the victim off their feet. They immediately fall prone. All attacks made against them while they're prone gain an additional 1d6 damage. Until recuperated, apply minus three to the victim's movement. So you'll be able to stand up again uh, by spending two AP, uh, but you are uh, you are suffering that, that persisting penalty until it's treated. So dropped is the wound you suffer. Wait, then, so I just have a question. Is my sword still stuck in the bear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, okay. yeah. Uh, then it is uh, Faricus, <laughs> what are you doing? Um, Faricus is going to spend... Uh, a point to flank the bear. Yep. Yeah. And yep, so got, um, everyone's getting plus 10 against him now. And then I'm going to attempt another targeted attack against the bear as well. Okay. And which one are you shooting for this time? Is it leg once again? The leg. Yep. Leg. Okay. Go right ahead. And that should be 10. Okay. We go. 
that is yeah success uh okay so then uh roll a coordination uh check please coordination and i think that targeted attack hold on i think he can use coordination or um here is 165 k okay. target attack is that affected by the flank at all that roll Oh, uh, so hold on. Uh, two things. Uh, targeted attack does one extra 1d6 plus uh, combat bonus. And unlike in um, the rough and tumble in Flames of Freedom, they don't resist it. Mm. So that's, the targeted attack is different in this. Uh, so then roll uh, 1d10 exclamation mark plus whatever your combat bonus is. You actually might kill this already with your longsword. 12. So 22. What does it look like as Farrakis carves this thing and kills it? Yeah. I think I took took this bear off. There's a arm off at the shoulder um, and and dropped it on the side. Um, and, and maybe even exposed, you know, Adelaide's weapon now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you fall back down uh, this um, savage bear having been uh, dropped. Now, um, Herrick and Adeliza, let's talk about um, first aid. Now, um, is anyone? No. And now you guys are going to get to see why I am going to make a doctor. Character. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. for, our, for our blackbirds right. of you. Yeah, so no one is trained in heal, I don't think. Is that right? <laughs> no. no. Fantastic. My, my doctor is going to be everyone's favorite character, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, does anyone have Salmiak uh, on their character sheet? Oh. Salmiak or... Um, what is the... Equivalent, hold on here. Or Theriac. Uh, Salmiac restores peril levels and Theriac restores uh, damage thresholds. Where would it be? Uh, it would be under your trappings. Oh, because my trappings is blank, so I wonder. Yeah, so I don't think you got anything. I just yeah. thought that uh, either Farrakis, or maybe you guys used them in the fight with that giant, that uh, night spider. But you guys had uh, recovered some of those from that uh, duplicitous uh, rogue that you met. All right. Now, no one... I didn't get a critical hit on anybody. No one suffered a critical failure on their attacks. Uh, so, that means no. Uh, there's no damage to anyone's gear. But there are some injuries that may need addressing. So, here, here, here is what you can do. Uh, for one, for the wounds themselves, uh, let's see here. Is anyone at level one? I think, uh, Adelaide, you're only at, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I'm at level one. Yeah, hold up here. Uh, yeah, what is it called? Uh, lightly wounded. That's right. Okay, hold on. Okay, so then um, what you need is a healing test at plus 10%, but it is flip to fail because you are, people aren't trained in it. Okay. So anyone want to try and treat Adelaide's wound? <laughs> you get a plus 10. Uh, I have a uh, intelligence of 45, if that's helpful. Anyone doing better than that? I'm, I'm at 47. I mean, a little better, but yeah, it's risky. You do have fortune points as well. I think we should do it for our own sake to see what it's like to do some healing without a proper healer in the party. <laughs> yes. So who would like to do it? Farrakis? Yeah, like someone should roll. I can try that. Okay. Can try that. So you get plus 10 to this, uh, and then... 
We're going to flip to fail. So let's see. Okay. Yeah, it already failed. Okay, so uh, it's not a critical fail. That's good news. Let's see here. <laughs> A failure, critical failure, or sublime failure on the test means the blackbirds cannot begin recuperating until they undergo successful treatment. Critical failure means you, uh, their wounds now suffer from infection. <laughs> sublime oh. failure means you drop down one level. So you yeah. will need to get actual treatment before you can recover that injury. Now, what about Herrick? Herrick, what level are you at right now? Is it moderate? Or uh, moderately, yeah. Moderately? Okay. Yeah. So that is a flat healing test. Who wants to make a flat healing test? Or ordinary uh, or standard, I think it's called. Uh, healing test flip to fail. Who's feeling lucky? All you gotta I do mean, is roll like a twenty-three or somewhere in that range. You'll be fine. Just. I mean, you're quite a lot better at it than I am. I'm not great at it. I'm only a forty-three. Okay, I can I can try again. Okay. That extra that extra bit actually matters quite a bit. <laughs> Here we uh, go. Come is on. this one standard? Then? This was uh, standard difficulty, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Can't really do much for him here. Okay, then uh, injuries, any moderate or serious injuries must be successfully treated before recuperation can uh, recover. You only have one injury. Uh, it's not the severity of it, it's the number of injuries. So we've got Herrick and Adelaide each have one. Faricus, would you kindly give us since you're the designated healer right now, uh, another <laughs> uh, another two uh, healing tests at plus 10, flip to fail. Okay. And we'll do Adelaza first here. Critical success. Hey. Adelaza. Oh, there you go. Uh, the recuperation time is reduced by... So it's treated... Okay, so while, uh, it's treated while undergoing recuperation... Uh, you still suffer from any penalties, but you reduce it by three. Jeff, would you give us a 1d10 plus one, not exploding? Uh, 1d10 plus one? Yeah. Oh, hold up, hold up. What's your intelligence bonus, Farragus? Three. Okay, actually, that only matters for bed rest. All right, so two days. You'll have two days that you're living with this... Um, Reduced movement. Maybe you like you tweaked an ankle or something when that bear knocked you down. Yeah. Okay. Dirty bear. And I think there's a place for you to record your wounds as well on the character sheet because that's a thing in all the Power Advice Vihander games. Should I go ahead and roll the other heal check? Uh, yes, please. At plus so 10. So does that mean I remain like lightly wounded until? No, no, no. Those oh. are two separate things. Your damage condition is currently because of the. Uh, ugh, fail. Um, <clears throat> oh, injured. Uh, yeah, so you need to get successful treatment. And let's see here. How often can you get treated? Oh, okay. A healer of yours look, is looking better and better, Jeff. <laughs> once per day. Once per day, you can it can be performed on you. Uh, so the that means that you're... Uh, your busted ribs are not even starting to recover just yet. I'm sure it'll heal on its own eventually. <laughs> I'll be it might stick fine. out a little bit, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> minus 20 to dodge and parry is the big thing that you gotta okay. deal with with that one. Um, but I believe, I believe, I believe, uh, there is one fortune point spend that allows you to ignore injuries uh, for one round. Let me make sure that's the case. Hmm. And here we go. Using so is my injury spin. moderate? Yes. Your Does injury, it have an injury is type? Um, moderate. Yes. And what about its <clears throat> injury type? Uh, injury type is uh, it was what it dropped. Because there's like a negative number in that field. Negative one, I think. Wait, hold okay. on. Let's see. Let me take a look at what you're looking at. I'll look on Gita's sheet yeah, as they, well. Yeah, there's like an injuries thing, um, and I just put sprained ankle. It's moderate level, two days to recuperate. Then there's like a modifier and a description. But one of them is injury type, and there are values in there. Let's see here. 
Okay, severed artery, moderate injury type. Oh, I don't know where that comes in. Maybe if the injury tells you that it gives you a penalty to It something? could also be something different in, in Zweihander, because this is the Zweihander sheet. Oh, this is the Zweihander sheet. Yeah, so it could right. be that. The modifier for you is just minus three to, to movement. Right. So I'll just put minus three in there. Yeah. So minus three oh, to no, movement. Oh, no, that's injury type. I'll put zero. Modifier, I'll put minus three to movement. Yeah. I don't know what the injury type is. I'd have to take a look at uh, Spyhander again. I don't remember offhand. Yeah, like I just don't know if it's going to mess with the sheet, so I'm just going to put zero in there. Yeah, and then Herrick, you can put that under, uh, same thing under combat tab. So with that thing uh, down and some clumsy efforts at trying to patch everyone up, what the hell's going on here? Why is this bear attacking you in the like right near the, the evening? It's very strange. I mean, unless it's starving... It Bears don't usually attack, you know, capable humans like that. Mm hmm What you could do is, let's see here. Certainly bad luck. If not worse, like bad fate. Oh. I wonder if the tracks would lead us anywhere. Yeah. Mm. He didn't hesitate to come straight for us, so. Yeah. Did yeah, you want to follow the tracks? Uh, I guess it, you could. Um, is is anyone inspecting the the corpse, the carcass? I mean, we'd have to do something with it. Well, you have to pull your sword out of there, I suppose, as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so why don't you give us a um, awareness? <laughs> no, not awareness. What would it be? I don't think, you, you know what, you don't have to make a roll for this. Uh, you're cursing this damn thing as you're limping along, Adelaza. And what you can see is that there are, uh, looks like two broken and one still with its fletchings on it, crossbow bolts lodged into the rear of this thing. Oh. So either it ran into other party of people or someone was hunting it. The injuries are only on the flank of this, or at least the, the bolts are only on the flank. Two of them, it looks like it maybe broke them off, uh, but the, the other one is, is... Do they look fresh? Like, I mean, I, I know I'm not a doctor, but like, is there, is there wet blood around them? Is, uh, it, the wounds, is it dry less, blood? What do you feel you're better at? Uh, tradecraft or heal? Both of them are flip to fail if you're not trained. Yeah. Um... Is anyone trained in tradecraft? No. That's nope. the other character. Oh, that's the other one, right? We needed to make. <laughs> yeah, we need someone who's good in tradecraft. No, I'm not. Uh, I think this, to, I mean, I'm not thinking of it as tradecraft. I'm thinking of it as heal. So I'm thinking I would. Yeah. I mean, that's. Give us a, a heal check at plus 20. It'll be flip to fail. But you do have tons of uh, fortune points right now. There you oh, go. Sublime wow. success. Uh, so you look in, these are fairly fresh. Uh, like ah. these wounds, you look in, there's still, like there's not even scabbing that's around there. The the um, yeah. the fur right around the area, the blood is still, it's cold, but it's still wet around it. So this must be like, it must have been f like running from wherever it is. Those tracks were leading off that, like it's initial tracks, the ones you found not far from here. Those were heading in one direction. This thing seems to have come back in this other direction and was loaded to, if you excuse the expression, bear. <laughs> I am so sorry for that joke. <laughs> um, can we recover an intact bolt? Uh, you can try. Yeah, yeah. This will be an easy... Let's make it a trade craft. Mm. Uh, I think something here is in more in your wheelhouse there, Farrakis. Um, why don't you give it a skullduggery, Chuck? Okay. Um, we'll give you a plus 20 on this. This is a relatively easy thing to do. Um, Just like pulling something out of someone's pocket. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you get this thing out. Um, there's nothing, uh, guess, do you have, uh, why don't you make a standard folklore check for us? And then, uh, Herrick and Adelaza, why don't you each give us a 1d10 roll? You, you, I'm assuming you're all taking a look at this and let's see what, uh, 
There you go. You got a success. And if someone rolls a four, you got a, you got a success. So you're looking at this thing and uh, Adelaisa, you recognize this as like, this is, there is nothing particular about this. This is the kind of crossbow bolt that would be mass manufactured by countless, um, f I don't know if it's Fletchers who make bolts, but something, uh, Fletcher, whatever the bolt equivalent of a Fletcher is. Uh, right. They crank these things out for the armies. A crossbow is a, v a very lethal, very easy, and low-skill uh, weapon. So they see a lot of use by a lot of the armies that are fighting over territory in Elkland. Um, these three, it could be... Uh, actually, what, what's your agility bonus, uh, Let's see, Seven. Holy shit. So... Your, the total degree of success with that would have been around a 13. I'll let you actually fish the other two out as well, too. And comparing the, the tips of the bolts, it's the exact same thing. Like I mean, effectively identical, made by the same hand. Just a simple iron bolt on the end. Um, of note, crossbows are most certainly, these kinds of things are most certainly not used for hunting. Hunters are skilled in bows, not crossbows. At this period of uh, time, a crossbow is a weapon of war. A bow is a tool for hunting as well as potentially a weapon. Mm, so these, yeah, these are soldiers. Yeah. We they don't want to go over there. Mm. We want to avoid that. In fact, we need to move away from here <laughs> in case they are going to see if they have or they come to finish the job. They got to be mm. pretty close if they yeah. uh, if this is that fresh. You yeah, know, and should... night is coming and you do have two very sneaky comrades. Oh, we could Oh, that's true. We could go sneak on and see what they're up to. I mean, to. the pine nuts that uh Farricus managed to recover uh, are pretty good in that uh, you know, lean to that he's managed to fashion in the snow. Probably, you know, at worst it'll keep the snow falling directly on you off of you, but if there are tents or any other things that you may be able to access. Mm. Stealing some of their food does sound really good right about yeah. now. Yeah. And some the, armor. Just the heat. Some armor. Yeah. <laughs> and armor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some medicine. <laughs> well, that's the thing. The, like, theriac is definitely something that uh, a lot of um, soldiers would have and things like bandages and whatnot that you would yeah. you need to be able to treat uh, uh, properly. I, yeah, I'm thinking ranged weapons are in order as well. At some point, we might <laughs> yeah. want some. I like the idea of going the entire Blackbirds of Yule with nobody using a ranged weapon. It's like our, uh, it's funny, it's our um, uh, Witcher our campaign. <laughs> It's when they faced a uh, griffin is when they realized, like, wait, do none of us have ranged weapons? <laughs> and this yeah. thing is kind of bombing down and hitting them and flying back up again. <laughs> A very instructive fight. Um, so then, uh, what are you guys thinking? At the worst, you could go and take a look, I suppose, and uh, and then just fade back. Farrakis and, and Herrick, with, with the prevailing conditions, it would probably grant at least a plus 20 to your stealth checks. And these are uh, opposed, so it would be contested against a uh, an awareness check uh, of whoever's looking at you. And they would suffer a minus 20 because of the prevailing conditions. So... If you're judging of how one of the neat things about the game is that if you do have something that weighs in your favor, it doesn't it, it uh, tries to reflect that in the contested rolls. So it you know if uh, in the same way that like attacks that get a bonus to hit impose a penalty to defenses. So there's a benefit to aiming. There's a benefit to you know whatever. So what are you guys thinking? You could eat this bear yeah. too, as long as none of those. Uh, uh, bolts or no. poison, it should be safe to eat. Well, that's that could be a good fallback. Let's go see what the uh, see where the, the bear came from and at least check things out so we you know what we're up against. Okay. Yeah. I think the lure of the lure of finding medicine is huge for us. I, I think knowing where they're where they are before they know where we are too is uh, would it would be better. So I yeah. agree. So I think Adelaza is currently moving at a three. Uh, three yeah. Uh, so <laughs> in comparison, Herrick has a 10, I believe you said. An eight and a five an now, eight. I think. Is yours reduced too? 
Well, I, I thought so. Uh, I could be wrong. On the on 10. That. I, I thought it was a minus three due to my injury. Minus three was was what Adelaza suffered, oh, and you, okay. but I think yours okay. was the minus twenty to uh, Perry. Yeah, I I thought it, mine was also that. So oh, it could be. Can, Let me take a look. I mean, it was a much I more just, serious. I just I just took that as like I thought that was the same, but I didn't. Uh... Uh, okay, let's see here. You suffered fractured ribs. Nope, uh, only minus twenty to Perry or Dodge. Okay, <laughs> only he says. Only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll come with you because it would be silly not to, but I'm definitely slowing us down. Okay, so then, um, why don't we do this, guys? Why don't we have uh, either Farrakis or Herrick take the lead and the other person will assist. Who's feeling lucky here? You guys do have a lot of fortune as well. Let Herrick try it this time. Okay. Uh, so Herrick, why don't you give us a stealth check at plus 20. And Farrakis, go ahead and give us a 1d10 roll. I will roll. Oh, I get to break out my, oh boy, my Blackbird's dice once again. Okay, <laughs> stealth okay. check at plus 20. Yep. Speaking of which, oh my gosh, we heard. So, um, Ryan uh, Vernier, the author of uh, Blackbirds, is donating a set of the Blackbirds dice uh, for us to give away during the Blackbirds That's of Yule great. event. Wait a shit. They are less droppable than what, <laughs> what I am. Uh, they're, but they're fantastic. They're, I, I don't know what they're made out of, but they're just, they all, they've all got like the symbols of Blackbirds on them too. Nice. Yep. You've got uh, the look at this. I love the ten. D ten's got the. Hey Madison, oh, your first time streaming. Come mm -hmm. on, Madison. There you nice. go. That. So we'll have a set of these to give away uh, during the Blackbirds of Yule uh, event, which is super nice. A uh, very generous of uh, Ryan. Um, okay, so I so a, a zero seven or which would be what's your agility bonus? Your A B Herrick. It is five. Five. So that means it's a 12. Anyone listening in with minus 20 to their awareness check would need to um, uh, would need to succeed <laughs> or beat a 12 in order to actually hear you guys. So you guys are, you know, shadows in, in the whispering trees. And what you're able to see is as you make your way to... Um, along this this path, and you can add lasers limping behind you. Um, it really is only a matter of about maybe 150, 200 feet until you reach a roadway. And you didn't realize, like, you knew you were moving towards that, but things have changed over the course of the last 12 years so much that, you know, uh, it's tough to remember where things are, what towns got wiped out, what villages have grown up, what forts are in place. But what you find here, let me see if I've got an illustration for it. I bet you I can find one. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. Let me see here. Objects and tokens I'll keep. And let's see. What do we got here? Oh, ho, 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 ho. that'll work. Okay. Let me move it up a scooch here and then put it on the old map layer. Oh, and I need to grab, you know, this is just not grabbing properly here. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna bring you guys over and show you what you see. Now, it's not quite as, like, located in the craggy... It's not up on a peak like what this illustration might suggest. This is just only slightly... Um, it's on a little raised bit of exposed rock in this part of Elkland. But it is one of the sort of... Um, 
it's a what you know hundreds if not thousands of these kinds of towers are located throughout Elkland that have sprung up as ways of fortifying uh, you know when petty warlords will lay claim to different uh, patches of, of road and demand taxes on them um, you would know from past experience that there is likely, uh, there's got to be murder holes in there where they, they can fire crossbow bolts from, and likely they can fire from the top and drop shit down on people from the top as well. You can see that there are lights on on the second floor of the tower, but there are no others on the ground, and there is no torch burning at the entrance as there is in this illustration here. But it does seem as if there are people inside. Damn. Hey Gary, does Herrick have the prowler ability? Or I believe. I guess talent? Yeah, I believe. <coughs> I have. Uh... No, I don't. I th the prowler technique, which. Uh... Oh, I do, but it's not activated. But okay, I guess. I've I've got that one active. Just okay. if we need it. Can we? Can you? When can you switch them? Uh, you can spend a, a fortune. You can either do it during a rekindling, or you can spend a fortune point and swap at any time. Yeah. So you could switch to it. Yeah. 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 And I guess I did have my reflexes uh, switched on, which I actually don't have. So. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, oh, yeah, which you don't own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. Mm, yeah, uh, what are you thinking, uh, Farrakis? Yeah, what's the plan? What's you, what you thinking? Well, you know, I, I like the idea of trying to get in there and get some resources, um, particularly healing if we could acquire it. But um, let's see, this this essentially would just allow us to um, get much closer and then see if there's any targets as well. Yeah, it, give, it provides, when it's slotted, it provides a persisting plus 10 to your uh, stealth. Yeah. So technically you guys would have had plus 30 uh, from those last checks if oh, both okay. of them were yeah. slotted. Um, and then there's the other things as well. And I think one of the, is it the extinguish ability? I should have grabbed my cards. Uh, is it the extinguish ability that allows you to just get away from combat? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. With the that's use awesome. of three AP. Yep. So you that is uh, that the extinguish abilities, Gary. Uh, they they are like the hail mary badass abilities. You can't you know, once they're flipped, you don't get you can't swap that one out, and that slot is unavailable until the rekindling. But they're you know game changer mm -hmm. uh, strength abilities. So as an example, in this case, if we ended up in trouble here. Yep, we could use that as a absolutely. An route. And you guys just whew, you escape full stop. There's no rolls. There's no nothing. You that happens. Yeah. And right. like, Farrakis, you have that as well. Yeah, I mean, it seems like we we would have a lot of options to continuing to stealth up to the structure and see if we can't learn more about who's inside or who's guarding the entrance. Right. What army they're fighting for? Yeah. Any symbols. Sure. So, Kevin, I guess I'll use a fortune point to flip it. You got it. Okay. All right. Do we see four um, still in this area at all? Can you? Sorry? Do we see tracks in this area the, from the bear? Yeah, uh, give um, us a and, uh, plus 20 uh, survival check, please. Survival. I think you're trained in it as well, right? Yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah so the... the the tracks uh, head like right up to outside and there's actually blood spattered on the ground out here. And there is one crossbow, uh, two crossbow bolts that are still, uh, one is lodged in the ground and one is sort of broken against the ground. So the, this seems to be the place where that blood mark is and where the tracks sort of turn around and head back in your direction. It is about 20 feet from the door along the road. Okay. Well, I, I think Farrakis would be interested in getting closer to to the door um, and learning definitely... more about tracks. Okay. So, Adelaide, this is around the point where you come up, finally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would you give us... I'm going to let uh, Herrick and Farrakis aid you, but would you give us a self check, please? <laughs> All right. Here we go. She's limping oh. along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a standard check. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, you got plus 20 because of the uh, prevailing conditions. conditions. All right, here we go. As you stumble around in the dark. Okay, there you go. Uh, you guys can roll as well. You can take the best. Uh, roll 1d10 each. A zero is much better. What's your AB, Adelaza? Your agility bonus? Oh, um... Two's pretty good, too. Agility bonus... Three. Three. Uh, so, yeah, if... Um, <laughs> both Farrakis and and uh, Herrick are more helpful than you doing it on your own. Uh, with Farrakis's assistance, that brings it down to a zero. That is a nine degrees of success. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So you come limping up and you see the same thing as well. So, what do you guys think? What do you think? Should we take him out? I mean, check it out. How far away are we from the door? Uh, front, you're the like kind of at the forest on the edge on one side of the road. It is on the other side of the road on this kind of prominence. Uh, it probably is about. Let me think here. It's probably about twenty strides. Like you could run the distance in one one round. I feel like the conditions are in our favor to go forward more than they might be uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Works for me. Okay. So why don't you each give us a standard... I'm just going to double check, see if there are rules for it. I'm going to see what stealth is when you're running. Because of the prevailing conditions, you're getting plus 20, but I think this is a, it, you know, it, it, there's a reason they've located this watchtower where it is. Uh, so why don't you just make a standard stealth check each, please? Um, I remember that Herrick and Farrakis, you got plus 10 uh, to your stealth because of your prowler. I'm just wondering if you guys should go and I should... Stay nearby in case, you know, like, I guess I'm so slow, though. Shoot. Oh, yeah, because, shit. Because your run would be... Like, I'm risking... I'm just risking everything on this mission to go with you at this... From this position forward. Yeah. Maybe we can signal you. If yeah. If you feel like it's safer. And you yeah, like, you guys up. can move you over there. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Because I don't want to blow this whole thing because she's... You know, injured and <laughs> slow. And... Okay, so Herrick and well, uh, Farrakis, why don't you each give us a stealth at plus 10? Pff, easy. Easy. Oh, barely. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you both, uh, it's like, once again, it's like clouds passing overhead, casting shadows down, and you both make your way over to the side of the watchtower. Uh, now, I'm assuming you're close to where that torch would be burning. If you look in, there is, a, like you'd expect, a big, heavy uh, a wooden door on here. But the wooden door, you can see, uh, well, both of you can see, has big gouges or scratch marks in it. Is it uh, still closed, though? Locked? Still closed, yeah. Yep. You, you would need a battering ram or something to get in here, or perhaps, say, some kind of uh, lock pick. Did, did the bear tracks come this close to the door? Uh, how you rolled really well on it before. Yeah, now that you're in closer, you can see that there are older bear tracks that are up here that are a little fresher in the snow. The curious thing is that there are no, you can't see any human tracks coming out. So it's not clear if it's, uh, um, it's not clear if it is, um, because of, uh, you know, they just haven't been out in a little while, but there's a couple, it looks like a couple days worth of bear tracks here, as if this bear kept coming back. And there's some pretty good damage to this door. There's no lights on on the main floor, correct? Not on the main floor, no, they were all on the top floor. Hmm. But there is a torch burning outside here? There is not. Oh, there's not, okay. What do you think, Herrick? Seems like an odd place to make a stand against a bear. Definitely. Um, 
other than trying to get in, like, I guess we'd have to figure out another way to look inside mm -hmm. or get up there. Yeah. So, uh, let's see here. I believe the skill for ascending things like that would be athletics. Let's see. Yeah, who can climb? <laughs> We're notoriously good at climbing on this uh, Friday night stream. <laughs> <laughs> I think, right. so uh, trying to climb this without any, um, it's not climbing a sheer wa castle wall, which would be arduous at minus 30, but I think it's probably an athletics at... It would normally be minus 10, but it's minus 20 because of the prevailing conditions. It's slippery as shit going up there. So uh, it would be an athletics check at minus 20. I only have 38 to begin with. <laughs> Plus the busted ribs. Um, I'm 53 <laughs> and trained. Uh, could, I could attempt it. If you, uh, yeah, and if you had like, a, I don't think you have them, but if you add like a grappling hook or something like that or climbing gear, that would help offset some of those penalties. Yeah. So what do you think, Marcus? Um, I think it's worth a shot. And um, if at all possible, I'll try to climb above some snow um, so that it might cushion <laughs> It's off. Yep. Okay. So, um, Don't worry, you get the rocks to break your fall. You'll be... <laughs> You'll be good. I'll, I'll catch you. We this haven't seen the, the falling that... rules in this game yet, so. Arduous? Uh, here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the, uh, no, it's uh, uh, hard, not, not arduous. Oh, okay. And then okay. as far as the, um, what you need, let's just say you need 10 to fully ascend it. So once you get a degrees of success of, of 10, you're at the top of this thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow. What oh, is man. your uh, brawn bonus, your BB? Four. Four. So that's seven with that first attempt. Right on. So you, uh, we can see you making your way up and you're cautiously scaling along and then you're up a little further. You get to a point where there's some ice and maybe you, you know, grab your dagger out, you chip it away, dagger goes back and you continue making your way up. You're 70% of the way up the side of this thing now. All right. Good. Well, we'll press on. Okay. All right. Um. Oh. oh. You want to spend a fortune point? <laughs> yes. Okay. That's not a crit fail. Oh. Woohoo. There you go. So that's two degrees success plus three is five. Farragus, what does it look like as you clamber your way up the side? Do you look down at anyone or? No, I think he's 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 just not even thinking about what's below <laughs> down, him at this point. He's down is the up, last thing on down. his mind at this point. Straight up and going towards the window ledge uh, and and okay. trying to kind of get himself uh, stabilized. So were you foreseeing him going over the top here or over the lower part here? Mm. Um, it, I guess um, the if there top is here light, is most likely yeah, there's light along on this level and this level here. Uh huh. Um, I mean, if he can make it all the way to the top, that that Done. might be uh, yep. yeah. So yep. you go over, and what you can see is that there is a uh, there's like a trap door that leads down into this uh, tower, and it seems it seems it seems uh, that it is. Well, you have to test it to see whether you can get in or not there. Hmm. Is there anything else? Um, any other signs of life or movement along the top of this? Ah, uh, there is a um, like a uh, a barrel or or um, uh, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, I guess barrel. There's a barrel uh, with that has a bunch of uh, or a basket that has a bunch of bolts, crossbow bolts in it. So clearly, this thing is stocked, ready to you know fire down from up here as well. Uh, and there's quite a few in there. Wow. Uh, there is no crossbow itself. Uh, but it seems as if the defenders are ready to be firing quite a bit down here. And then there is the trap door that leads down into the uh, inside the building. And I assume they match the ones that we had found earlier. They look of the same make. Yeah, okay. oh, yeah, definitely. If you take a look at them, they look exactly the same. Now, one of the things, remember, that uh, 
you can spend, and this is for uh, Gary's edification, in keeping with the inspiration for the where the name Blackbirds comes from, the Norns guide other spending of your, uh, what do you call it, of your fortune points. So for instance, you can use Erd's voice to do a, add a flashback to add something in. You can use Verdandi's embrace to alter something in the present, or you can use Skull's vision to ask me a question, the, the Fate Weaver, a question of the future. The reason I mention this is because one such spend that Farrakus could uh, add is that there is a coil of rope up here. That's where my mind was going with the maybe even the the flashback, right? Something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's a great uh, time to try to do that. I'd love to get okay. um, Eric up here and. Yep. So, uh, Adelaide, you're seeing all this happen from the far side. Yeah. So, Farrakis, you, uh, Herrick, you're maybe waiting down there, and then there's this <laughs> coil of rope that suddenly drops down next to you. Okay. Uh, so this, I think this is routine, plus 10. Mm. So that's uh, athletics plus 10? Yep. Athletics yeah, plus not... 10. It's still not too high. It's 30, uh, 48. 48? Well, let's see here. What is your... Uh, oh, your BB is a 2, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But, you know, uh, you got to be brave at these things, right? Yep. So is it go possible for it. to assist by, like, pulling? Um... Yeah, I'd allow that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so give us a 1d10 roll after... Okay. Uh, and then Herrick, give us a athletics at plus, uh, t uh, plus 10. Farrakis, nice. Oh. oh, no, that was... No. That was Farrakis. Oh, okay. Now, Herrick, you want to spend a fortune point? Yeah, I do. Okay. Please. Go ahead. Reroll. Okay, ooh, a six from Farrakis. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, it's not a critical <laughs> failure, though, so you're just failing to make a, a bit of a, a distance here. I'm going to make an awareness check for those inside. And this will be just a flat awareness. And let me find my stats for my for what is inside. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. While you're looking that up, Adelaide is definitely thinking, if only I had a bow. Or something <laughs> yeah. strange would be pretty could good. Be covering right? my allies here. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Awareness is a fifty. Okay. And do I want to spend a fortune point to re-roll? Let's do that. It's been a misfortune. There we go. Okay. Um, I think, Farrakis, would you give us an awareness check uh, at, I think it's just a flat one, just a flat awareness, standard awareness. Nice. So what you hear, Farrakis, is someone inside, hey, I heard something outside. And someone else replies with, I ain't fiend fooled for that. You stay where I can see you. I'm telling you, I heard something outside. There's a third voice. I don't care what you say. You're staying right where I can see you. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we missed, uh, we did start late, uh, so we missed our mid-session break. Why don't we take our, we were talking beforehand. Why don't we take our mid-session break now? You can contemplate the meaning of those strange voices within, and then we'll decide what you guys are doing next. Okay, so for those listening at home, we'll be back momentarily.
Vericus, how did you get so good at agility? I thought I was good. <laughs> uh, I'm a 50. I don't know. I, I, I just have um, good stealth and it, it, I've got, it looks like all of my apprenticeships are mostly agility based. I don't know if I also am getting some type of bonus for my my social class of being a Nephilim or not. That may be helping a little, but. Yeah, I kind of thought I kind of maxed out my like kind of agility and all that kind of stuff, but. You're kicking my butt. I, I mean, it's nice to have. It's nice to have two stealthy characters. It's kind of rare, but uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't make the character, so I don't. I don't know how the points were spent for whoever did roll it up. Well, you got a kitty in the background. Yeah, he was trying to type you something there, and I <laughs> cut him off. Okay, guys. So where we left our heroes. Uh, was Adelaza uh, on the other side of the road. Um, Herrick, having struggled to get up, drawn the attention of seemingly <laughs> one person inside, which led to an interesting interchange. Maybe interesting is a little too much back patting on myself, but an exchange nonetheless between individuals in the tower that Farrakis overheard from his position at the top of the tower. I'm apparently turning voices. our channel into like a 80s, uh, you know, weekly drama where we recap what happened before the commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys wish to do next? So Adelaide's obviously you have no idea what's what's happened here thus far. But Farrakis, you heard that. Herrick, you haven't heard. Actually, Herrick, why don't you give us a give us an awareness check at minus 10? I think you're in a less advantageous position to hear this. But you might hear, you might have overheard that too. I have a plus 10 for my apprenticeship, um, which I don't think gets factored in. So it it does, always gets factored in, yep. Uh, but uh, not through the role, is it already in the role? All, already like in the, the role, okay. yeah. The only okay. thing you need to worry about okay. is adding the minus 10. Okay. Look at that. Ooh. So Herrick, you heard the same thing too. As oh. you're struggling up, you heard that exchange. Well, this is all by design. So you, exactly. I was just trying to draw them out. Uh, so perhaps you like, Farrakis, so like you, you look down at, at Herrick and you both exchange a knowing look. So you both can like, did you hear that? Yeah. So okay. I'm curious you, about- You wanna hear a funny aside? This is a non sequitur, but so I, I uh, cause I'm, you know, uh, my fo folks are uh, immunocompromised. I wore a mask when I was in uh, court uh, the last two days. <laughs> Apparently, I either have, well, it could be a combination of any of these things, an inability to whisper and hearing damage, which I knew I had anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> I whispered something and the whole, I thought I was talking to only myself. The whole fucking court was like, it looks, <laughs> looks over. <laughs> so apparently my whispers are what normal people talking is. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. Um. The, the hatch that's on the top, the hatch door, Yeah. Um, how, how is that open? It looks like it opens up or it how, looks how like is it? It does swing up, but it looks like it's intended to be open from the inside. Uh, so mm -hmm. it may require a little bit of finessing uh, to get it open yourself. But allow me to justify my second copy of Blackbirds here uh, <laughs> to check something. Ugh. While I've got some monsters open. Here we go. Okay. I will say for those looking for those last minute purchases uh, this year, all the players in all the uh, countries that we play with now, available on Amazon. I mean, if, if, how you feel about Amazon or Jeff Bezos or whatnot, I'll leave it to you to decide, but uh, it does make for, it's a pretty awesome game. Um... Mm -mm -mm -mm. What was I looking at before I was shilling? I don't remember. The, the hinges? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, hinge. that's what I was looking at. Hold up here. I have an idea of what uh, skill you'd use, but I want to double check. Let's see. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's probably uh, Skullduggery once again. It says any practically any larcenous or illegal activity that a blackbird might undertake using their hands. Bypassing locked doors and chests without a proper key, decide, disabling security contrivances and complex traps, or employ sleight of hand upon small objects and hide cards. So, um, that's what I would think you would do. If you if you'd like to try and open it, even though it opens from the in uh, from the inside, you could try and use some skullduggery to sort of like push this thing open. And and uh, make it uh, pull it up towards you in a way that it's not designed to, to function. Where is Herrick at in relation to me? Has Herrick is, is she still scaling the side? Yeah, I'm pretty much uh, like unless he's you're gonna try and help him again. He's probably around here. Okay. Maybe uh, or like even just at the base here and and going you know looking to go straight up. You could try again and and uh, I would hit him. Like to. I I prefer to have Herrick here. Um, before I mess with the door, or yep. I was just curious um, if the door were going to open towards me, or you yeah, know, and, and it, it would up, lift would up towards yeah. you. Like if you're inside, what it would be is like there's probably a latch or something to, to seal it, and then the way you get up from inside to out is to push the thing up, okay. so you can get out. It's it's a way of defending it from if anyone does get access, like the way you guys have. It's a way of keeping them out. You know, uh, or at least uh, providing yet another way of of defending because trying to claw this thing up is difficult for the average Joe when they're not, you know, master larcener larceners larcenous individuals. I don't know, uh, like you guys. <laughs> um, it, does it seem like the barrel of bolts would be heavy enough that it would? make it difficult for them to lift that hatch where I place it on top of it. Absolutely, yeah. It would be difficult to, uh, they're not, the barrel's not super heavy, but there's enough stuff around here that you could bring over and kind of weight it down. That might okay. not be terribly quiet, uh, unless you get a successful brawn check, but, or I think it'd be athletics. Adelaza, if Herrick had some, you, you could also assist if you were on the side by like holding the rope on uh, steady on the ground. That would give another assist dice to Herrick, and he might have a couple of D10s to choose from. Yeah, like, I mean, if you guys want to wave me over, I could try and sneak over there. That's a good idea. Okay. I think now that we know perhaps there's a, hopefully, a limited amount of people in there, and they're not all at the windows watching, it makes sense for you to make your way over. Okay. okay. So give us a, just a standard stealth check, please, Adelaza. Um, why okay. do I not see? Oh, there it is. Follow in our footprints. <laughs> oh, no oh, problem. Good roll. Easy. So you, yeah, uh, yeah you likewise too. So, uh, you're limping your way across, but you're making no noise, and you do it in such a way as to draw no attention, or seemingly no attention, from the uh, uh, tower. So you reach over there, Herrick. What do you whisper to Adelaza to bring her up to speed? three different voices inside and uh, we should try to get in as best we can the question I was going to have Kev is the rope like hanging in front of that one window like if we is it easier to get up just in through that one window uh, the windows in here are likely um, they, they'll likely have uh, iron bars worked into the, the mortaring uh, okay. in here to prevent people from getting in okay so uh, you would know then. yeah uh, I mean you like with some contortioning, maybe you can get in there, but most likely that those like you'd at the very least be making noise, breaking the glass to to get okay. access. Okay. Well, I guess uh, uh, Adelaisa, do you want to go up first, or do you want me to? Um. Because your you your injury go. doesn't doesn't prevent you from moving. What the difficulty is the last person up isn't going to have an extra person stabilizing from the bottom. So um, the person. Well, I have a forty-eight brawn. Oh, okay. And I'm, I'm apprentice in athletics, so I. I'm, I'm thirty-eight, so maybe. I can yeah, you that. go. I'll hold the rope for you. So Herrick, uh, why don't you give us a an athletics check, and then Fericus and Adelaza give us a one d ten roll, please. Oh my God. Okay, Fifty-eight. Oh, you do have plus 10 on this, so you've only failed by, because uh, of the stabilized rope. Uh, so you've only failed by 10, and there you go. There's a success, but let's see if you get a crit. 
Come on. Roll a game. Oh, so Adelaide, you're rolling a d10. Oh, sorry. Because yeah, you're helping. Assist. I forgot. A six. Okay, that's not helping. So, what is your? No. Oh, your brown bonus is a two. So, so far, that brings you about halfway <laughs> up with that first roll, Herrick. So you're slowly making your way up, but you're getting there. I'm a pinch point on this adventure, I think. <laughs> so you're halfway up. So that's where, hey, you tripped a bear with a bullwhip this session. So, like, I think you've you've done your part, <laughs> you know? I can take a hit, at least, I guess. <laughs> okay. So you're <laughs> up there. Uh, and then it is, uh, what, so give us another roll. You're halfway up. Plus 10 again? Uh, plus 10 again. And then uh, Farrakis and Adelaide each roll a d10 once again, please. Oh. All right, this one oh. I got. Oh, oh, never mind. Uh -huh. He's up and over. Uh, so that's Eww. four, five, six. Yeah. Herrick is at the top and over. So the two of you are up there. Herrick, you see exactly what I described to Farrakis before. Some bolts up here. And then Adelaide, what are you thinking? Yeah, I guess I'll try. Okay. So, uh, Farrakis, why don't you roll a D? Oh, Herrick, now you're helping out. Why don't you give us a yeah. D10? And Adelaide, give us an athletics check, please. At uh, plus 10. Ugh. Nine. <laughs> uh, Let me just pour this oil on here. here. This will limber it up nicely. Oh. But look at that. But what's your BB? Uh, your uh, six. <laughs> so Adelaide's a... Yeah. <laughs> one single round she heart brings herself she's not herself. even using her broken ankle she just pulls herself up with her arms <laughs> nice. and you haul yourself up over onto the top all right so you guys are all up on the top of the uh, thing there's the rope ha hanging over the side tied up to probably some kind of I don't know there's something up here to be able to secure it to what do you on guys... this um, landing below us, yep. do, can we look down to see if there's anything down there of note? If you look down, uh, there is a, a, another, um, uh, like a single bucket or uh, a barrel of uh, uh, bolts, and there is a, a similar trap door that seems to lead down inside. There's mm -hmm. more snow accumulated on that one. It looks as if it has not been used as much. And the voices that... I heard from the top felt like they came from underneath the trap door on the very top. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, we have, we have another option. <clears throat> uh, just from the look at like these, you know, uh, you would know that it's pro it's unlikely that it's one giant room across here. They are probably built as separate structures. So at the very least, there may be a separate mm. room over here than there is over here. Which way, which way? Well, we get the element of surprise, but then we might not be able to get it open if it's covered with snow and ice and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, I guess there's the possibility of luring them out. Yeah, like prepare an ambush. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make make some more more distinct noise and see if anyone decides to come take a look. Right, position them. Yeah, I like that. I like positioning an ambush. So, as then... a reminder, the way the surprise rules work in this, the surprise round, um, if you are surprised, uh, you don't get to do anything. You have zero AP uh, to to use in that first round. Everyone gets uh, who isn't surprised gets three AP to act freely. If they have zero AP, that means no defenses. Uh, that means, yeah, it, it, it uh, oh, and I believe they also take 1d6 extra damage. Uh, if they are surprised, let me double check that. Surprise round is particularly, like if you're able to get the drop on your opponent, it is particularly effective in this game. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I forgot to ask her the the bullwhip. It got knocked out of my hands in that previous encounter with the bear. Is it was it damaged at all? No, or do no I still not damaged at all. Just it is uh, yanked out of your hand. Uh, so yes, it is an extra damage dice. So you do one extra da uh, damage of uh, one extra dice of damage during the surprise round. Yeah. Yeah. Ambush. Ambush. Okay. Okay. 
So I think uh, Adelaide would get her shield and her sword out and okay. position um, right by the door. Okay. But not in view. It's... It, so it's a trap not door. A window. That, it kind of goes oh, up it's like a trap a, door. Yeah, right. yeah. So like, if uh, picture that the, um, you know, the door just kind of it, it would go up like that. Yeah. So, so you I could can, stand behind like, it. Yeah. It I might afford about... some cover uh, for the uh, if you, if you're trying to attack over, but if you got yourself to like kind of the side, on a, and on a surprise round when they come up, you could spend it to hustle to move in position and then attack if you wish. Right, like, right. Stay a little bit away from the edge, and as they, lit, you know, as you see it coming up, kind of charge in. I like that. Okay. Yeah. How far is the barrel of bolts from the hatch? The door. From the hatch, uh, probably like three or four strides. Okay. Yeah, not okay. far at all. Each stride okay. is about three me, uh, three yards, I believe. Or sorry, each stride is about one yard, so three feet ish. So maybe one person could duck behind the barrel, another person could be behind the hatch door, and another person beside the hatch door. Um, so we almost have them triangulated there. I like that. Okay. I don't know if it would make sense to try to whip them around the neck as they come up. Oh. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> That'll hold them up. Yeah, that's vicious. Okay. So then let's do this because we're going to be moving into this round in a moment. Why don't you each click on your token and click on initiative? And then I'm pretty sure I loaded. Oh, and uh, Herrick rolled. Oh, you don't have flight me back. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't say roll twice, but tank the case. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Okay. I, I was just looking through the, <laughs> uh, looking back, trying to find the um, uh, tokens uh, for this and uh, I just went right through our Conan uh, batch of things. I'm like, giant shark, <laughs> shark monkeys. <laughs> so, <laughs> all good stuff. Great Some memories. Layers of role-playing images. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a great bit of, like, uh, channel archaeology to go through the uh, <laughs> things in there. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, that's from that session. And that's from that one. That's from that game I prepped and never actually ran. Let's see. All right. So what we have uh, is each of you in a position. So for the, uh, I'm going to give you guys each plus 20 on your stealth checks. And I'll give them minus 20 on their awareness checks. So I'm only going to make one for them. And where's my dice? I'm moving too many things around here. Okay. Okay, so uh, <laughs> stealth checks at plus twenty, please. I'll put this in descending order here. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> 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 So, I thought roll 20 hated me. Yeah. <laughs> tell us what, uh, first off, before we interpret these rolls, would you tell us what you guys are, what was the plan for, for the noise for up here? I, I was thinking of if, if there is a prevailing wind that we would knock some object over in that general direction of the wind okay. uh, so that they would maybe not it would not be as obvious um whether that's the barrel or some other you know piece of equipment that's up here something that would be loud enough that they wouldn't think it they would uh wouldn't think it was natural to hear okay 
guy like that. Unbelievable that's game. A, a sublime failure. Oh, yeah, yeah, sublime failure. So I think. Oh, I know. It's it like basically amazing. ruins it for everybody. I think <laughs> so. What you picture is you all get in position, you knock this thing over, make a little bit of noise, and then just as the the uh, the top of the trap door is being opened, Herrick moves back and accidentally hits a barrel. That kind of like wow, wow, like a lid falls off and it does that like plate on the ground thing yang, 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 or like you know a uh, hubcap that fell off yeah rah, rah, rattling around they're like Ugh! and they know that someone else is up here so let me just add now hold on you guys didn't want to surprise them anyways <laughs> yeah he's keeping it interesting <laughs> let me bring these guys up here let me go to the right layer Oop, here we go make them a little bigger and we'll add a turn here. And all right, there, initiative is 13. So unfortunately this will, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the great thing about this. Even though Herrick ruined the surprise round, so those free actions will get, Herrick still acts first in the first round. The difference between the surprise round and the first round of combat is that everybody starts with three AP at the start of the first official round of combat. So that means they can defend. They got lots of opportunities to try and defend. So Herrick, you are up first. Uh, you have three actions. You're probably about two, th uh, maybe three strides away from them. They have your, they, you have their attention. Uh, with with the whip, I don't know the distance of that. Would I be able to attack without any movement? Ooh. Uh, what you say again? I'm sorry. The if I'm using my whip, the bull whip, is it, it is the two three strides distance? Uh, you enough? need to be one stride away with a with a okay. bull whip. It's got so, it's got reach, so you can be one stride away from your opponents. Okay, so I will move and okay. So you hustle with for the one, whip. and then yeah. uh, you want to make a targeted attack. You want to make a regular attack. What are you thinking? Uh, let's uh, do a targeted attack around the neck. Okay. Try to pull him up. Okay, so uh, targeted attack, just so you know, is there's actually a specific, like uh, if you look at page 167, that's what the specific uh, effects are. Okay. So you're trying to hit the head, that is a disoriented uh, effect that as you actually do extra damage on it, uh, 1d6 plus your combat uh, bonus in extra damage. And then uh, around the neck would be disoriented plus one AP to the cost of reactions. So actually, it's, it's actually a pretty good uh, check. Um, that If you're trying just to trigger your entangling effect that you've got in there, that's where that automatically works with any kind of attack that you do. Okay, well, let's just... The that, advantage then. of the target attack is that it does more damage and then also adds one of those conditions, but it would still also trigger the, the opportunity to uh, do either... Um, what was it? To knock them prone or to um, grapple them. Does that make sense, Gary? I think so. Uh, okay, so a little bit of, to... I'll, you know, I'll run through it one more time just because it is yep. it is a little complicated. So your your whip has the entangled uh, entangling ability, right? Mm -hmm. Or not ability, trait. What that means is that any attack with that, you can automatically try and grapple the opponent and then you can choose whether to try and knock them down or try and grapple them. Yeah. Uh, or you entangle the opponents to grapple them or to knock them down because both those are conditions. Independent of that is how you choose to make your attack. You can make a regular attack, which has no modifiers but costs one AP. You could also spend an AP aiming to add plus 10 to your chance to hit, which would add minus 10 to their defenses. And you'd still be able to engage your, uh, your abilities of entangling with your whip. Uh, you can also make a targeted attack, which takes two AP, it adds 1d6 plus your combat modifier in damage, and you get to impose one of those four conditions, depending on what you're targeting. You knock them prone, disorient them, wound them, or I can't remember what the other one is. And on top of that, you still have your whip ability, because that's separate. That's something on any attack you make with your whip. Okay. Does well, that I'm make going sense? All in with, I think so. Okay. I'm going to go all, all in with the targeted 2 AP attack. Okay. And then which are you going for? Disarmed, wounded, disoriented, or prone? Um, Take disarm. a look at page 167. That'll tell you. No, I think disarm. Disarm, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is carrying a crossbow, so that's not a bad idea. Okay, uh, so then uh, with all that said, uh, you go ahead and make your attack. This will leave you defenseless this round. Yeah. 
Uh, well, here's where you're going to roll that critical like I'm hit. Due. I'm due, right? <laughs> yep. Here we go. Come on. Let's see a critical success. No, <laughs> that is not what we asked for. You want to spend a uh, fortune point reroll? Yes, please. Okay. How many do I have left after this? Because I was getting low. Was no, like no. The, you can see on the screen. You see where the, f oh. the yellow box is and the red box is? Okay. I've when got, you spend I a fortune point, it goes to me as a misfortune point. When I spend misfortune okay. points, they go in the fortune points. The yellow bar or yellow uh, box is the fortune points. The red box is misfortune. Got it. Okay. Can? I see how it goes. Sorry, your pictures were covering it the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That's where I have your uh, video. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Come on. There you go. Success. Okay. okay. Uh, you know what? You're not wrong about the positioning of it. Is that more helpful, guys? Because it's, it's just out of the way from... <laughs> That's really good. Oh, yeah, that's good, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it I'll... was always behind our heads. Yeah. Okay, sure, yeah, that would be better. Okay. Um, then, 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 I have, I do have a lot of AP to spare here, so I am going to try and uh, defend. Uh, I have, let's see here, my parry is a 60%, but I wouldn't be able to do that with my crossbow, so I'll do a 55% dodge. One thing I like about this game, uh, you can always parry or dodge against any kind of attack. Uh, you need a shield to build a parry against ranged, but in other versions of Eyehander, you have to dodge range attacks, parry melee attacks. So, here we go. 55% uh, chance here, and uh, you had no modifier to yours. Here we go. Oh! Sublime failure! <laughs> oh, no! Good. So, it's just like the other. I think you clatter uh, his, his uh, crossbow for sure hits the ground. And I'm going to make an attack roll. If I happen to roll doubles on this, it goes off and attacks him. Okay, so it doesn't. It just drops to the ground, but uh, you did eight points. Uh, so eight points of damage against his damage threshold. Ooh. His oh, hold on. First, uh, would you kindly roll uh, 1d6 exclamation mark? What's your combat bonus, your CB? Uh, my CB is... Hold on a sec. How come I can't find it? It's under your, uh, under the combat uh, yeah. ability under the main tab, or combat uh, stat under the main tab. Your traits are, or your uh, attributes are all uh, underneath your talents and techniques. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was looking at my combat. Okay. Yeah, under the main tab. Um, five. Five, okay. So 1d6 exclamation mark plus five, please. Because because your targeted attack, it does this extra damage. Uh, and you said plus five? Uh, plus five. 1d6 yeah. exclamation mark plus five. Okay. Uh, so that's not great. But that does 14 then. Uh, so that's enough to wound one. Uh, so he is down to t lightly wounded. Then um, we need to make... Uh, oh, then he is, you said he was uh, disarmed, so he's for sure disarmed. Then you also need to make an entangling check. So do you wish to try and disarm him? Uh, or do you wish to uh, knock him prone? Uh, disarm, please. Disarm. Well, he's already dropped it. Oh, sorry, hold on, hold on. No, a grapple or knock prone. Uh, after the disarm? Okay. The disarm's uh, already happened. Okay. Uh, um, Mark, let's knock him prone. Knock him prone? Okay, so go ahead and give us a coordination check at plus 20. <laughs> Why does roll 20 hate me? You want to fortune point that? <sighs> I'm eating up all our fortune but uh, I think it's worth it. Uh, uh, don't worry. I'll give those misfortune a good home. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. do it. Just nice. do it. Yeah, they're never used up. That's the nice thing about this mechanic is that like they're always coming back. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, no. <laughs> All right, so you're not going to be knocking this guy prone. Uh, so that is it for Herrick's ah. attacks. Then it is mine. All right. Um, so... <laughs> I have some misfortune things to use. So first thing I'm going to do 
is uh, I'm going to spend 2 AP to activate a trap next to Herrick. <laughs> Herrick, would you kindly give us a coordination test, a standard coordination test? <laughs> you want to fortune point that? No. <laughs> so there's I'm done using them. Uh, something like slips in the uh, stone and there's a uh, uh, some kind of a spring release trap that's in here. You are knocked prone and you take uh, 2d6. Oh, actually it doesn't say. There we go. Six points of damage. So you take another level. What, what does that put you to? Is it to, seriously wounded? Seriously no. wounded. Would you roll two chaos dice, please? So we're one and then one more time. Oh, no injury. So you slip and hit the ground. Um, I got a lot of AP here and a lot of uh, things. Okay, then um, that was two AP. I think um, he says to the one below him, um, they're trying to get in. And he's gonna duck down and put his hand up. He's gonna pull this trap door closed next time. So he had to hustle down there. Adelaza, what are you doing? Um, Spring in and attack the one who was going to close the door. Okay. Uh, now, so it'll be a hustle to get in. Uh, and yeah. then you have two AP left. What would you like to do? Um, so what? Sorry, what was the difference on the targeted attack again? Target attack is two AP to, to do it. Uh, you get to impose one of four conditions. Page 167 of the core rulebook, it has the four options in there. Oh, okay. Okay, and then what you can do is uh, you also do 1d6 plus your combat bonus extra damage. Okay, well, I don't have my book right beside me, so I'm going to... It's on my bedside table. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> where, I, where it belongs. Absolutely. Okay. Here we go. So, um, what are you thinking? Regular attack, aimed attack. To, to yeah, I'll do the I'll do the aimed attack. I don't know. It's, I'm, you know. Okay. The advantage of that is it imposes a uh, minus. Actually, he seeds up all his uh, action points. So he can't dodge. It'll give you a plus a plus ten to hit for you. Minus ten for their defenses. But go ahead okay. and make your attack at plus Beautiful. ten. Plus ten and. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that, and maybe yeah. you'll beat him in the AP uh, next time. Look at that, seventeen. Holy smokes! Now you could also spend a fortune point to add plus six to that. Yeah, and you said it did extra damage because it was the cold shot. Yeah, and I'll do the extra. Oh dice. yeah. Also roll. How many did you roll here? Uh, oh, uh, you only rolled one dice too. Holy smokes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and roll one d. What's your combat bonus? Just CB. Uh, CB is... Is it on this page? I think it's six. Uh, no, no, it's on the uh, main page. Oh, it's page. on the main page? Yeah. yeah. Uh, six, yes, six. correct. Uh, so 1d6 exclamation mark plus six, please. Extra. This is on top of the 17. One, Holy smokes. 1d6 exclamation mark plus what? Six? Plus six, yeah, plus your CB. Holy shit. Come on. Eight. Oh, 25. Oh. So that's still uh, a lot. One, two, three more down. He is uh, okay. Would you roll five? Um, uh, no, three. Chaos uh, five, dice? Uh, three chaos dice, please. Okay, come on, roll twenty. Give him a six. Yes. yes! Give us a one d six roll, please. All right. Break his arm. Uh, four <laughs> is. You know what I'm looking forward to is when they have the pod versions of uh, um, what they call injury cards for this because you just I just go through the deck rather than having the to go back to the sheet each time okay 
four is arterial spray. <laughs> Victim bleeds out at the end of their next turn unless someone staunches the flow with a bandage or treatment. So wow, you nice. race forward and hack across his neck. He said, like, get down and... <laughs> Blood is spraying out. He does not look like he will be around for long. Farrakis, what are you doing? All right. Do, do I see the other one behind this one? I think um, if you stride forward, you will see, like, the, the bleeding one is kind of partway down the ladder. The other one is right below him, about to go on the ladder. What they were planning on doing this round is to go up one at a time. Okay. Um, I want to try to get to the uh, the one that wasn't injured and grapple with him. Sure. So here's what I think that we'll need. You, you need one action to get over. And remember, you can spend fortune points to get extra action points. Uh, so, and you're not necessarily restricted for how many you do. You could spend all five in one round if you choose to. It just means <laughs> lots more misfortune for <laughs> your friendly neighborhood fate weaver. Um, so I think it's one AP to get over to, to um, hustle over to the side. One AP to like leap down there uh, and just give us a, this would be like a routine, whatever plus 30 is athletics check. Because it's okay. really not that far that you're hopping down. Okay. Trivial, they call it. Trivial? But it wasn't. Critical failure! Oh, oh no! <laughs> All right, so let's see what uh, our falling damage rules are here. Uh, you so this is why if, we need a doctor. Um, if it was a sublime off. one, I would have had you land on that fallen crossbow and finally go off. <laughs> All right, so falling is after combat, but before magic and before trappings. Here we go, environmental hazards. Uh, falling, here we go. Uh, so I think, I think, I think it'll be 1d10 plus 3. If you could roll that for us, please. This is how much damage you take, so I'll take, you'll add it to your, um, 8. How does that compare to your damage threshold? Let's see. Uh, that's, it's the first level. So lightly wounded. Nice. Okay, so you're lightly wounded and you're prone from falling. It would be two AP to get up and you have one left. You could spend a fortune point to get that extra point and scramble to your feet. Yes. Okay, good call because they get plus one dice of damage when you're prone. Uh, and is that it for you or you want to bank an AP for defenses if necessary? I will bank an AP for a defense. Okay. So here we go. That's more misfortune. My, my turn to Poor start moi. stealing from the fortune. <laughs> yeah, hey, it keeps it interesting. All right, uh, then that brings us to the uh, end of round one. <laughs> so everyone <laughs> click on your token and go ahead and roll initiative, please. Oh yeah, I can spend uh, fortune points. I'm very limited in what I can spend fortune points on, or misfortune points. Like in addition to the bullshittery of their actions, it's like jumping up on initiative or um, mis re rolling dice. I don't get to do a lot of the other fun stuff. But the jumping up on initiative is pretty fucking cool. All right. It's pretty strong. Five, six, six. Yeah, it's a really. Uh, okay, so. Two, I'd have to spend three misfortune to jump to the top to actually do something, and I think I'll do that because that sounds fun. And I feel that you guys uh, could use the fortune points. All right, and let's delete that. Okay, uh, so f that means these chumps. Well, the one guy, <laughs> he dies. The other guy. Oddly, is doing nothing to help him whatsoever. Now, would oh, what am I doing here? Come on, I'm just gonna move this thing out of the way so I don't remove my. I think that's my for. I think that's my. I think that's my initiative token. I've already lost track of it. There's two. I had to keep track of two things, and I could not do it. All right, so then I am going to. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to do an underhanded attack because they are tricky. Mm. Uh, there is a, he draws a, a dagger as a free action and you can't defend against this, cannot be dodged or parried. Cost me two misfortune for this. 
But Farrakis, this guy is going to try and get you. So I am rolling against a... Whoops, what am I doing here? I'm rolling against a... 66-0. So let's see how it goes. Uh, that is... 1 AP. This is my second action point. <laughs> Farrakis, you barely scramble to your feet, and this guy gets the dagger out and stabs it at you. Uh, for the last AP, I think he really wants to try and get you. So I'm attack again. I'm at minus 10. I need a 50%. It's a fucking oh. mess. <laughs> Wild swing at you, and he leaves himself defenseless. Adelaza, you're up top next to there. A blood-covered longsword in your hand. What are you doing? Um, so the, the other guy's not up here, is he? Uh, like he's down in the hole, right? Both of them are down the hole. Yeah, yeah. There's the yeah. ladder leading down. One of them has just fallen to the ground, died. He's spraying blood out from his, his uh, yeah, slit throat. Um, i just wondering how safe it is to jump down there with a fucking broken ankle or sprained ankle. It only opposes <laughs> a penalty for your movement, uh, so... Well, I guess. I mean, it's not totally realistic. So, yeah, okay, she'll, okay. she'll jump down there. Go ahead and give us a plus uh, 10. Uh, athletics up... It was, Farrakis, yours was an athletics at plus 10, right? I oh, no, it was plus 30. No, 30. Yeah, 30. so plus 30, Adelaza. Oh, okay, here we go. That's no problem. Well, so Farrakis thought, too. Okay, so you... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you uh, is one action to hop down. You got two more actions. Farrakis, uh, this guy has got a, a dagger out and a crossbow in the other hand, and he's just been trying to stab Farrakis with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely. Um, I'm just going to make a normal attack against him this round. Okay. Because I want to keep my last. Oh, it's one on one now, right? So... It is. Uh, yeah, it's one on. Well, I mean, there's one opponent, but you're not out. No, uh, you guys have more of you than him. Right. So I get the plus ten percent. Correct. Yeah. To hit him. Oh, whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Right on the nose. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So that is. Uh, also, remember your longsword is defensive, so you get plus 10 to your defense, uh, to your parries. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, what and that then does. I'm going to use my last uh, AP point for my Barovi's guard. Okay. Oh, nice. Well, hold on. Let's do uh, damage on this guy first. So it was 10, uh, which is enough to give a lightly wounded condition. So here we go. Boom. Um, all right, so you hack and he argh, turns at you. He's not pleased to be double teamed here. Um, you could spend a fortune point to make another attack if you'd like to grab an, grab an extra action point. Oh, uh, yeah, why don't we do that? Okay, so be minus 10 on this. Uh, so basically, yeah. just roll a standard one because you're might as well make the second attack, yeah. yeah. So we, okay, yeah, no modifier here. Look oh, at that. Oh. Whack, whack. And another one. Okay, and that's just enough to knock him down. Would you roll one chaos dice, please? All right, take this. Oh. No injury yet. All right, uh, then. And you got your Barovi's defense up as well. Uh, Farrakis, you're up next. What are you doing? Um, are we already flanked with him, or can I still? Not yet. No, you have to spend. Okay. In this game, uh, you have to spend the one AP to position yourself in as a flank. Then I will flank first, okay. so, and then attempt a targeted attack okay. to disarm him. Now, let me double check one thing. I was looking at something before. Because you're using a long sword, right? So, yeah. 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 And the reason, hold on, put this aside for a second here. I'm just organize myself. Okay. Uh, God forbid when they release more books for this game, because uh, already having <laughs> shuffling back and forth between multiple copies of the same thing. Um, it isn't. Okay, I wasn't thinking. I think I'm going to impose, if you're using your longsword, I will impose a minus 10 for to parry with a dagger. It is something that's referenced in the defenses uh -huh. thing, because if you're using, like if you're using a pike against a uh, dagger, the dagger's going to have a hard time parrying that. Ugh. So, Farrakis, what do you... Uh, you get one AP to flank, you got plus 10 to hit, and then what do you want to do with the um, other two? I'm, I'm going to try a targeted attack, and I think I'm going to actually just try to make go for his leg to make him prone. Knock him prone, you got it. Go ahead and make so. your attack, plus 10 to hit. Nice! Solid hit. 
Uh, I'm out of AP, so I cannot defend, which means he is knocked prone, and nine would be one more. Do you want to spend a fortune point and add six to that damage? Yes. Nice. Would you kindly roll uh, three chaos dice for us? Okay. Oh, dang it. Okay. And then I'll spend the fortune. All righty. Uh, then uh, it is... Oh, um, do you want to spend an AP? Or spend a fortune point to get an AP for defenses. Remember, you can spend I, those only on your turn. I will, yeah. Okay. All right. So you got one AP banked as well. Uh, then it is... Uh, Herrick, your turn. What are you doing? Do do I have access to attack, or is there too much in the way now? Uh, I think you could use your whip down at this guy, because you could use it a stride away, right? That's probably, you know, nine uh, or three... Well, hold on. A stride away is is uh, three feet. This guy's probably... I think you can probably use a whip against this guy from on top. That, that sounds kind of funny. Okay. I also just finished watching, like, an eight-hour retrospective of uh, all the Castlevania games... Uh, last weekend, so uh -huh. I am uh, inclined towards a whip-wielding hero at this point. <laughs> okay, I will strike with my whip. Here you go. I got no defenses. Yes, yeah, schwack! That is a hit. Uh, actually, that'll be enough to kill him. Nice. So oh, wow. you maybe nice. catch him on the neck and yank, and it kind of breaks his neck, and he drops down dead. So... You can hear muttering and whatnot in. You guys are in this sort of uh, top floor here. And it looks like there's a lantern they've set up. Uh, it looks like there is a uh, staircase that leads down one level to a more well-lit area. But there is only one lantern here. And you can hear shouts uh, from down below. What's that? What's going on up there? Is that multiple voices or a singular voice? Uh, multiple voices, once again. He's betraying him, I told you. It was him. <laughs> quiet, quiet. It might be a third one. Wait for it. Oh. Mm. Hmm. Mm. He looks so, so What has dropped down here? Each of these guys <laughs> is dressed like the soldiery that you would see in uh, one of these armies. So uh, they have leather armor on they have or sorry light leather armor they have a long sword they have a uh dagger or a um a shiv i should say and they have a light crossbow both of them was armed with a light crossbow oh i think we should grab those light crossbows for sure um whoever's is there someone a skill where you'd be better at the crossbow yeah in this <clears throat> in this game uh there is just uh ranged combat or and melee combat does anyone trained in ranged or are you guys all melee fighters uh, like you're still capable it's not a complex skill if you don't have it we would just use your your raw okay. combat skill simple ranged yeah, we only use either of them. There's only one uh, in Zweihander that make a difference between simple and and, and um, uh, martial. In this game, there's just one. If you've got training in one of those kinds of range things, that's the you've got trained in range weapons. Full stop. Yeah, he, uh, Fericus has simple ranged. So you go. You're trained with uh, crossbows, or with range weapons at least. Okay. Okay. So you can see uh, page one or no, hold on two twenty, I think. Maybe. Um, 223 has the stats for uh, um, light crossbow. Yeah. Ooh, fast, which means it's minus 10 to uh, dodge. Piercing, which ignores one point of damage threshold from armor. And punishing, which adds 1d6. You can spend one extra AP to add 1d6 damage. So it is a vicious weapon. Nice. Does take two AP to reload, though. So uh, you pick up one of those suckers. And Adela does anyone else want the other one? 
I mean, Adelaide is pretty happy with her longsword and her shield. It's and a shield, a one of the things, remember, you, one of the qualities in your shield, that allows you to parry range attacks, including crossbow bolts. Right. So of the three of you, you may be in the best position to defend against uh, if you got your shield out uh, against those range attacks. But there's at least three different voices you heard from down below. What are you guys thinking? I think I might take a crossbow and I'll just shoot it off once at least. Okay. Just so you grab a crossbow as I well. I can drop it. Yeah. Um, you said they're below us. Is it a staircase or another ladder? A staircase leading down to a more well-lit room. Yeah. The ladder here is what leads up to the, the uh, trap door. We could try again to surprise them. <laughs> I'm sure they're coming up. <laughs> What's yeah. down here? This seems to be the supplies. Like th this up here, uh, there are, you know, sacks of grain. Uh, there are um, bought crates of things that may be uh, bandages or other supplies. Mm. Okay. Could we take cover and wait for them to come up and shoot them? I, I think that's uh, a good move. Yeah. Be good. Okay. You guys take cover, and I'll be ready with the shield and the sword. Okay. All right, so then uh, the uh, what you guys hear is there's a bit of an interchange from, from down below between these characters, you know, trying to figure out, you know, whether they're going to go up or whatnot. The overwhelming... I'm not going to just talk to myself with different voices <laughs> for five minutes, but what you get is, like, they're, they take time deciding to go up, and what you hear... It seems like none of them trust each other. There's a lot of like, you going first. You think I'm going to go first? You go first. Now he wants you to go first. I'm going to be behind all of you. That's just what you'd want, isn't it? There's a bizarre bit of distrust that's going on down here. <laughs> So then you hear a voice at, at length. As finally, one of them says, All right, who's up there? And yeah, what you done with Elric and Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Are you going to call out? Sure. Let's, uh. They won't come up if we. Yeah, I don't know. We know you ain't like, that bear. You have to melee with them. Who is it? Oh, they said they said something about the bear. Yeah. Oh. Oh. We know you ain't that bear. <laughs> <laughs> I. Hmm. <laughs> Are you more? Are you more deceptors? I don't know if they're still up there. <laughs> We're oh. not deceptors. Okay. Uh, who are you then? Yeah, who are you? Uh, we are the ones that killed the bear for you. Well, you killed that bear. Aye. Well, who are you? Fuck, who are we? That's a good question. <laughs> Existential <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, I have a bunch of jerks, I guess. Yeah. We break uh, into places and kill people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we just want safely out if we can take some medicine with us. What are they saying? What's that about medicine? Oh, Trevor and Elric still alive. I don't think so. <laughs> he may be tricking. He is right. He may be wearing a different face. Oh. Throw down Trevor and Elric. So we know you ain't taking their faces. Mm. Uh, 
okay. So we, we'll do that, I guess. <laughs> Send them down the steps. <laughs> One body goes down. <laughs> well, that's him, all right. Are you still up there? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's really not them. How'd you get in up there? Well, he must have came through the trap door, didn't he? Did you come we through the trap up. door? Y yeah. We did. That means they're not fast. Maybe we could trust them. Oh, I don't think so. They're probably here to steal stuff. They already killed Trevor. Uh, true told, I never really liked Trevor. How about we come down and talk? They talk one amongst each other a little bit and then say, All right, come down. Drop any weapons you got, or we'll fire. Hmm. What you can do Conceal is open. you could try. Who would like to make an. Where is it here? Uh, you could make an. I think it's an awareness. Hold on here. Oh, scrutinize. You can make a scrutinize check against their guile. If they are lying to you, this will tell you whether or not they are. Well, if they are lying to you, this will tell you whether or not they are. It's a really boring sentence. <laughs> are we able to aid it, in this one? If you're trained in it, hold on, is, is uh, scrutinize, scrutinize, scrutinize. Scrutinize is a common skill, so yeah, any anyone can, uh, you can have one person take a lead and then you can have others aid. I'm at 53, but I've been rolling particularly bad tonight. So. Yeah, <laughs> Which means hilarious. you're due for a good <laughs> roll. You're due for an amazing roll. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's Again, it. you use the bull whip to trip a bear. So I think your your job's already been achieved for tonight. How's your guys' perceptions? Um, lower. I'm 46. Uh, what's it under? Oh, uh, 44. That's my percentage. Okay, well, I guess uh, I will do it. Okay. So, and then uh, Farrakis and Adelaide each give us a D10 roll. And go ahead, Herrick. Yeah, there we go. Success. Oh. Oh. Eight's not great. Oh. Eight's Eight. not... So, Herrick, your time yeah. to shine. What is your uh, perception bonus, your PB? Six. Six. That's a seven in total. So, you guys all sort of look at one another... And oddly enough, they seem to be, at least you feel, that they are being sincere. Okay, well, I say lower your crossbows and I'll come down. We're going to keep our crossbows up. You're in our tower. But Fair we point. won't fire unless we need to. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll go down. Okay. So you make your way down, uh, wheezing a little bit, as you do. <coughs> Excuse me. And what you find down there is four more of these guys, mm. all armed very similar to what uh, the others were. But the curious thing is, they are spaced out to be kind of equidistant away from one another. And you can tell, because you rolled a good enough uh, uh, scrutinize, Herrick, as you're going down, they are keeping eyes on one another as much as they are on you. The crossbow, all the light crossbows are pointed in your direction, but as they're coming down, uh, they're also keeping an eye on one another. And they're all very different. There's like a you know a little skinny guy. There's a bigger guy. There's a guy with right. a beard. There's a guy with you know long hair. Like they're they're all different. Uh, personalities, but they're all spaced out, and there is a wary look between all of them. Herrick seems to have moved far enough down the stairs, guys, that if he was going to get shot, he could have been shot here, and has not been yet. What do Herrick is? will follow and set his long sword on one of the stairs, okay. you know, so they can see that. Okay. Uh, 
the uh, at you put the the long short down. Um, one of the others says, "I wouldn't do that. You best keep your arms on you." And he's looking at not you guys. He's looking at his companions. Mm. Do you retrieve your longsword, Faricus, or do you leave it where you've set it? I'll leave it where I set it for the okay. moment. Okay. And are you carrying down the stairs, like walking away from it? Mm-hmm. Okay. I do still have my other, my dagger and shiv <laughs> yeah. um, hidden on me, but yeah. <laughs> Faricus is by body weight about 30% sharp pointy things, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Uh, and then Adelaza, what are you doing? Um, I think I would be definitely, after he says that, I'd be coming down behind him and I would sheathe my long sword, not drop it on the ground. Okay. And then sort of show that I have open hands. Okay. And you got your shield out still too, right? Yeah, I still have my shield on my arm. Okay, kind so of you thing, all but come I'd be down. Showing and, them my hands. And you can picture that this this room is pretty much a big open room. There's like um, there are weapons racks where you'd be storing things like pikes and great swords and some other stuff. Uh, these guys are only armed with a long sword on one side, a, 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 a shiv on the other, and then uh, light crossbows. Uh, there are more barrels similar to what you saw on the roof in a little bit better shape with. A bunch of bolts in them but these it looks as if what they've there's probably barracks elsewhere in here but they have all dragged their barrack their beds you know bed rolls or whatnot into the same room so they've all been sleeping and you see there are two others so trevor and uh uh elric are were likely sleeping in here as well before you guys you know shuffle mm. them off this mortal coil uh, or mm-hmm. their mortal coil. Uh, what do you guys do? As you get down and there's a wariness, and you can see, like, they're keeping, again, they're keeping their crossbows on all of you, but they seem to equally be looking at one another. All right. Do, I even want, do we even want to ask who's in charge here? Uh, the uh, little noisy one says, there ain't no one in charge here right now. Someone here. Ain't who they seem to be. Where are the others? This is all that's left now. Can we scrutinize that? Uh, yes, absolutely. There should be at least 12 guys in, in this uh, barracks like this. Just a standard? Uh, yeah, standard scrutinize. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, he seems to be... There is a degree of, um, you've been on like extended watches before, you know, you've, you've been serving as a mercenary in this war for a lot of times. This guy has the like strung out, not enough sleep under constant tension look. Uh, and it, to be honest, if you glance at the others, all of them seem to have that. They've all got this stuff and curiously, they seem to have taken the death of their comrades pretty fucking well. That is unusual. Their comment about someone not being themselves, that's a curious one. Why don't you each give us a folklore at minus, actually make it a standard folklore. Yes, that's what I was gonna ask if we have any, if we've ever heard about clones or copies or the, base the changers or yeah. anything yeah. like this. Okay. So what'd you say? Minus twenty? Uh, no, no, no. Just, just flat. Uh, uh, standard. Oh, flat. Yeah, okay. standard. Critical failure. <laughs> we have never heard of such nonsense. So, so Herrick definitely cannot re-roll this. Uh, Faricus or Adelazo, do you want to spend a, mis- a fortune point and re-roll? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just go each. Give us a re-roll. Uh, take those as. Oh, what? One better. (laughs) (laughs) So you guys are looking at one another and you you don't know what they're, you know, like in the the Betrayer's War, people talk about people being two-faced or whatnot, but that's, you know, what are they? Right. Sounds like madness. That sound like madness. So, the uh, big one says, you said you defeated, you said you, you rid us of our bear problem. What do you mean by that? It's carcasses out in the winter woods. You're welcome to check it, but it's not going to bother you anymore. 
Wait, well, you heard that? We can leave now. And the little one, I ain't leaving with honey. <clears throat> I let you, whoever you are, disappear into the crowd? No, we got you here. You're trapped here with us, too, you liar. How do you know one of you is not who they say they are? Because we used to have 12 men in this fort. And now, one by one, they've been slaying, killing us. Someone in here is taking the faces of their others. We've seen it. One, <laughs> you wouldn't know him. Jeremy. And he gestures at the big guy, the little guy, points at the judge guy. He saw him. He saw Jeremy standing over Jeremy's body. A dead, bloody dagger in his hand. He ran past him, and then we lost him. That bear's been out there for days now. And once we was trapped in here, or seen here, that bear out there. And then, that deceiver in here. Who could tell who was who? Mm. When we need a petri dish. <laughs> Someone in here is a liar and a killer. It's you, I swear. It ain't me. It's, and it kind of degenerates into them yelling back and forth at one another. It seems that you would think that a bunch of guards would be more put out by a bunch of thieves breaking in the roof, but that does not seem to be the case here. Yeah. They're comforted, they're comforted that we're not suspects. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'm just trying to think, like, if there's anything that... Do we know that magic... We know about magic, right? We don't yeah. know about face changes, but we do know that magic exists. You absolutely right? do, yeah. And in fact, Farrakis has, as a Nephilim, has the ability of odd sight and can view oh, I, creatures as they truly are in the odd. However, they can see when I'm doing that? Correct? Yep. Yeah. They also know that you, uh, you would, they would know then that you are a Nephilim. Yeah. Whether that oh, has a negative effect. Uh, do you want to reveal that or not? Maybe not quite yet, but... I have a proposal for the, the, uh, the guards here. If, if we can sort out who amongst you is the face stealer um, and solve that problem can can we pass through and and um, take some supplies and be on our way there's a tense moment of all of them kind of looking at one another taking the measure of you know who's going to deny this and they say yeah that seems fair I hmm. can agree to that all agree to that too the last one kind of looks, well, I'm not going to be the only one who don't. Yes. You find who's the murderer, and they will kill him. And we'll have to see what that is next time. <laughs> we are out of time. <laughs> Great. So then, guys, uh, for those, oh, well, first off, uh, you would gain, i I, I got to give XP to, because we've been kind of uh, fits and starts playing this thing. I do have to give, uh, reward points rps out to people uh, between now and next session actually and gary you're playing your actual character for the uh blackbirds of yule i don't know if you want to play Farrakis or not uh, jamie or create your own character uh you're free to do either um but uh yeah if you do play Farrakis again we'll give you some xp for that just to reflect is, this stuff is sean gonna be making a sean character? has a character yeah sean's got an independent okay. character already okay yeah 
Um, but, and again, don't feel that you have to play Farrakis. You can certainly, you know, part of the fun of the game is there's a shit ton of options for making your own character, and I'm yeah, happy I'm to... Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, let's do that then. We'll, we'll have everyone <laughs> make their own. But then, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for the uh, our impromptu uh, session. And Holy shit. Stray, thank you so much. Uh, Stray made a uh, $50 donation uh, f uh, for us. Thanks so much. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, too. That's very, very oh, kind of you. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's awesome. Um, the, uh, what do you call it? Um, this session, <laughs> bandits, bears, and betrayal. <laughs> so then, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for this impromptu uh, Blackbird session. I, I guess, first off, before we go to the outro, Gary, this was your first time playing Blackbirds. What did you think? It's good. I, it took me a little while to get the hang of it, and I wish I had rolled better, but it uh, looks like a you know, fun a mechanic. And uh, the I would say the action economy was like I just didn't know about that, but now that I do, I kind of i will delve into that a little bit more. Absolutely, and it's really just again a matter, like there's a lot of options you have with it too, so it's really just a matter of, and also knowing what your allies can do too. It was very yeah. cool seeing you guys, uh, it, you know, synergize by both using Prowler at the same time. It just speaks volumes like to why like there is value in having people who share the same uh, techniques. You know, it's, it's not necessarily yeah. important. Having the same character, a character from, the, excuse me, the same uh, path does not necessarily mean that they're going to always be overlapping uh, the same thematic space. They actually may complement one another, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, Jeff and Jamie, you guys are becoming old hands at uh, Blackbirds at this point. <laughs> Jeff's your fourth session, I think, with uh, Blackbirds. Yeah, I really like it. I, I like the way it's in place. Yeah. Hey, awesome. Well, and you know, and it'd be there in terms of uh, throwing again for those listening at home. We we knew 15 minutes before we started playing that we were going to be playing this, so this was all thrown together at the last minute. Uh, it says a lot about Blackbirds that we can have such a fun. I gave the name to the session and was like, I got a rough idea what's going to happen. Let's see what happens. It's amazing that we can. Uh, the, there's an, so enough material in the setting to be able to throw to get something together like that, and to make it for a really that bear was a fucking awesome opponent. Holy smokes. That a good job on the voices. Yeah, that bear was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. Did a great right. job on the voices. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's a, 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 I'm going to be uh, strained when I have to do any other voice. I actually need to listen and practice a German accent between now and Sunday session because Sunday we've got a Prussian. Uh, we're playing Flames of Freedom again, and there is a Prussian who seems to be hunted by a vampire that the guys need to help escort. So I, uh, um, Ingolf helpfully sent me a, a, someone who has a Prussian accent is Hans Zimmer. So I'm gonna listen to a lot of interviews with Hans Zimmer tomorrow <laughs> and practice that accent. But anyway, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for yet another impromptu session of Blackbirds. Uh, again, we'll be starting our Blackbirds of Yule event on uh, the 21st. So uh, next week we'll be kicking that off. And then we'll be running sessions of Blackbirds between now and the end of the uh, year. Uh, we've got a bunch of different sessions planned out. So it's gonna be lots of fun, little done in one sessions like this. Uh, and then during that time, I'll figure out between now and when we start, how, uh, when we'll be giving the uh, the games away. I don't know how we're gonna do that. Like I'll, uh, I wanna make it a way that's gonna be fun for the viewers and, and whatnot, but we'll we'll figure something out. It'll probably be our last day on new, like New Year's Eve when we will be giving away the actual, uh, do the, the draw for the dice, but I'll figure out before we start what that is. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, uh, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below and we'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. In addition, there's a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server and we have a channel there dedicated to uh, Blackbirds and Powered by Zvahander games in general. So if you're enjoying the, this game or you're enjoying uh, seeing us play um, Flames of Freedom, we got a channel dedicated to that where you can chat about it uh, in addition to channels dedicated to every other campaign we run on the channel and most other games that we run as well as well as a bunch of other great channels like finding a group or you know learning about uh, virtual tabletops or online things there's a ton of helpful people over there you are more than welcome to join us there is also a link down below to our friends at noble knight games noble knight games is the preeminent retailer of uh, hard to find and auto print rpgs in north america and they are also the um as of recently a voluntarily recognized unionized workplace so congratulations again to our friends at noble knight and the workers at noble knight for that that's a terrific uh, outcome for the uh, for everyone uh, considered noble knight is not only a terrific source of new 
role-playing games, tabletop games, and uh, table, sorry, uh, new, <laughs> I always say tabletop board games. Like, what other kind of board games is there? You know, the kind you spin <laughs> in your head, the kind you toss back and forth. Uh, for role-playing games, board games, and card games, as well as an amazing selection of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs, if they don't have in something that you uh, want, you can put it on a want list and they will let you know when it came in. I most recently, my most recent indulgence was the Conspiracy X second edition from uh, Eden Studios. I've been looking to dive into that because we had so much fun with All Flesh Must Be Eaten this year. Uh, so that just came in. I was able to pick that up. And I made use of the discount code MUSINGS, all caps MUSINGS. Uh, if you purchase uh, for $10 or more through their website, you enter the code MUSINGS, all caps, and you will save yourself 10% on your purchase. Um, I've used Noble Knight to fill a number of holes in a number of different collections of mine, so I find them to be very reasonably priced. Uh, stuff that is in high demand is going to have a higher price to it, but things that are not, uh, you can often get for less than uh, cover price. Um, like my, uh, my Aberrant, my Aberrant First Edition collection, which I have yet to actually make significant use of, I filled for less than cover price for each of those books. In addition, there's a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children. And all donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman. It just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. And uh, as a small way of saying thank you, next month in January, next month at the time of recording, in January uh, 2023, we'll be doing our next charity raffle draw. And our grand prize for that will be a copy of Beetle and Grimm's Platinum Edition Spelljammer Adventures in Space. We recently ran a couple of sessions using that, but our friends at Beetle and Grimm's Pandemonium Warehouse have donated a copy of the Platinum Edition for us to raffle off as our next prize. If you don't win that, every $25 Canadian gives you one chance to win something. If you don't win that, there's still going to be a bunch of other great prizes as well. We got a chainmail dice bag made by our resident armorsmith, Dave. There's a bunch of prizes for Dungeon Musings Red Bubble Shop and a couple other things that I've got kicking around that I can't remember what they are right now. They're in my spare room. <laughs> my guest room is now slowly becoming the hoard for that. But uh, every $25 that you donate gives you one chance. Canadian that you donate gives you one chance to win and again all money goes directly to those kids who benefit from the SOS Children's Villages International's activities and if you want to learn about them follow that link you can learn all about SOS Children's Villages International and the great uh, uh, the great works that they uh, do the last thing I will say is a huge thank you to our flock, to our stalwart blackbirds who dove into this session with very little prep. So Jeffrey, Gary, and Jamie, thank you so much for returning to the Carcass Nations with me tonight. That was a shit ton of fun. Every time I run this game, I enjoy it even more. It's growing on me every day. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, then. So for those listening at home, we will be back with our Call of Cthulhu campaign in the new year. Uh, but we will be back with the Blackbirds of Yule event kicking off next Wednesday. That's Wednesday the 21st, I believe. Uh, until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our flock have been encountering on their on the war road on their way towards Farrakis's long promised or secure employment. I don't know if I... Mm, that guy. Uh, and until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming.